Welcome, folks. <laughs> it's Saturday night. Uh, yeah, and time for Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, tonight we will be having our uh, Sunday Hobo here on Saturday night DMing, and we also have another. Frankie is playing tonight also. So uh, if you're tuning in to us for the first time, we're sorry. But <laughs> uh, if you are, strap in, folks. It's going to be a ride. Anyway, uh, you know us. I'm David. Uh, tonight, uh, Jason is going to be DMing uh, a one shot for us. And uh, yeah, we're all pretty excited about it. So folks, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a uh, look at our YouTube page. Uh, we have a Discord. We have a swag shop, our uh, tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. Check it out. We've got things in there for you to buy. And we also have a new item and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's see. We also have an audio only podcast, just in case you don't want to take a look at these money makers here. And uh, yeah, just want to say thanks to Pirate Dog Dice, uh, Oddfish Games uh, for Adventure Sense. And uh, yeah, that's it. What am I forgetting? Oh, uh Frank's going to kill me for this. Murder Hobo Con, folks. Yes, check it out. Murderhobocon.com. Uh, you'll see that August 1st, we are hosting a virtual convention. Should be a lot of fun. So that's it. Now I'm going to pass the reins on to Jason, our GM for tonight. All right. Thanks, David. I appreciate it. And as we get rolling, just a word of caution to everyone that's listening tonight. Um, this could be really underwhelming, the, the event this evening. So <laughs> David building it up is probably a bad place to start. We should set the bar much, much lower than that. Probably. Um, but I will be jamming, jamming tonight. I promise not to uh, push Volbitter's Brewery or Volbitter's brand more than, more than necessary. Um, but for all, what's that for every 15 minutes? Yeah, Volbitter's, Volbitter's Brew. Uh, that's an inside joke for the Sunday watchers. Before we get rolling, the characters have all been given some background information for everyone, and we're going to start right where the, the excitement begins. Uh, hopefully everyone who's watching and, and the party themselves will try to identify some key pop culture references and what the basis of this story is. It is an amalgamation of two well-known stories have been blended into this adventure this evening. So it's, it's a bit of a mystery. One will be very apparent. Let's see how quickly it takes for folks to pick up on the other one. So as these characters get rolling, we'll do a character introduction as soon as I set the scene. Um, for, the, for the players, they've already been told they are standing in the middle of a woods, a clearing, upon a hillock in front of them is a dark, tall tower. Uh, a storm is raging around them. And upon this come our four intrepid adventurers who are freshly, let, have recently left a, a wedding, a beautiful wedding. It was a summer wedding. It was beautiful. The bride was lovely. Um, they, they were all friends of the bride and groom, and now they're trying to get home to their home village across the dark woods, and things have gone awry. So with that, let's meet our characters, and we want to start, David, since you started us off, do you want to just introduce your character, race and class? Sure. <laughs> Those of you who don't know me, folks, I am David. I'm on the Saturday Night uh, Calamity campaign. I'm also on Cacophony, and do one shots uh, here, uh, you know whenever I get a chance. <laughs> so tonight I will be playing Shaughnessy, uh, otherwise known as Sean. He is, uh, yeah, he's a halfling. Um, yeah, and things just seem to go his way usually. So we'll see how that pans out tonight. He's a champion fighter, uh, physical description, of course, halfling, short stature. He's, uh, he's got that, you know, 70s red feathered hair. He's got the Logan style uh, mutton chops. Yeah, his breastplate is leather coated green with uh, a red clover on it because his last name is- Battle Leprechaun. Leprechaun. Yeah, he's a battle leprechaun. So oh, that's geez, it. That, that's Shaughnessy Cloverleaf, folks. That's who I'll be playing. Hey, thank you, David. How about Z? Uh, hello, I am uh, Jesse. I usually play the lead and ranger on the Calamity campaign on Saturday and occasional one shots. Uh, tonight I'll be playing Z, a Warforged uh, Paladin Oath of the Watchers. Uh, Z does, uh, 
is just very protective of the flesh bags that he has around him. Uh, he sees them as uh, as all flesh flesh creatures need protection, as they are not <coughs> naturally armored or uh, well versed in uh, protection. So Z is like an uh, overbearing mother hen who doesn't understand human nature at all. That's one thing we are tonight. A bunch of, you know, skin flesh bags. bags. Yeah. Flesh, flesh bags. bags. Flesh yeah. bags. Yeah. Meat sacks. Dirty flesh bag. Meat yep. sack. I like that. Meat sacks. Meat sacks. Meat sacks. Yeah. yeah. Bowl of fruta. Hi, I'm Bowl of fruta. I'm playing a uh, rejected Minotaur Barbarian. I was rejected by my clan at a young age, sold into slavery for being the runt of the litter with broken, fractured horns. Sold into slavery, I was used to pull around a dead pit fighter cart, which strengthened my body and then in, uh, used as a practice dummy. It honed my skills, and finally I just rose up and killed everybody. <laughs> and now I'm a bounty hunter. And I'm only five foot five, so I'm a short guy. I have an attitude, very Italian style. You know, hey, you talking to me? I'm ready to go. It's going to be that kind of night, folks. <laughs> so, so we have Joe Pesci with a bull's head. <laughs> oh, pretty much. Right? What are you laughing at? You think I'm funny? Do I fucking amuse you? Okay, go get your shine box. <laughs> 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 oh, it's a good day already. Perfect. All right. And last but not least, at least, Nimoy. Hi, I'm Rob. I normally would be playing Dave tonight, and I'm going to try something a little different for sure. Um, I'm playing Nimoy, who is a tortle, but not just a tortle. Uh, Nimoy is a hexblood tortle, um, entered into a pact with a um, hag when he was but an egg. So therefore, he has a little bony crown that grows around his head into a tiny little pair of antlers up in the front. Other than that, he looks like a turtle, but kind of a little bit taller and like skinny looking with a longer, narrower shell. Um, so that's that's Nimoy, and he's a wizard. Going to be a hack someday. Prosper. Let's hope he long lives and, and prospers, you know. <laughs> Going to be a hag someday. <laughs> then I'll live forever. Be a hag. Wait, uh, is just I have to ask: Does Nimoy every seven years have a certain kind of itch? He has to go back to his spawning ground. <laughs> um, that was that... removed once the uh, the uh, hex blood <laughs> took effect. Oh, okay. But otherwise, otherwise, yes, I would have to return to the same sandy beach to spawn. But it'd be more like uh, thirty years. Uh, every thirty years, uh, ritual combat and all that, notwithstanding. Now, okay. all right, all right. I do have from, a question for you, though, before we start. For me or for for uh, Sometimes we got a pond far. So, so yeah. does yeah, but does the the hex magic extend your turtle life? Because turtles don't live long, man. <laughs> they they live about fifty years. They yeah. they at fifteen they become mature and then go venture into the world. And around thirty they return home to breed and then they figure out what they're going to do with their lives. But yes, once you uh, expect accept the hex blood, you are going to become a hag. It's like, it's like being maturity. Amish with just a longer. Uh, with I'm, 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 I'm right. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm no longer a turtle in that sense. I'm fae. Yeah, fae. <laughs> there you go. So becoming I, a hex blood no. makes you fae and removes all your other things except you get. Like your racial traits still exist. So swim speeds, climb speeds, et cetera. Got it. I feel like I should call him Faye at this point. Nimoy Faye? Faye Nimoy? Nimoy Faye. Faye Nimoy. I just Nimoy. have a question. How Nimoy? long did you say a turtle lives normally? Around 50 years. Now that's 50 years normally, but that's like five can five game shows in Murder Hobocon? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe 10. Okay, maybe 10 in Murder, if you use Murder haste. Hobo Land. Okay. If you use mm -hmm. haste. All nice. right. With that, we'll go ahead and get started. And again, I didn't equip pace. all four of you are friends. And uh, as we established earlier, friends of the bride returning home and a storm has disrupted your return trip. You have wandered aimlessly through a dark woods, having lost your way as a storm took over and has washed away the path. Uh. Lightning is flashing above your heads. As you stumble into a clearing, above you is a tall tower. And this tower is somewhat unusual in that you see a large central keep that is a rounded area with three triangular towers, almost like bricked up fire escapes, that run up 
on the sides of this building. So and it's fairly large. You can identify, uh, even in the flash of lightning, even though it's very dark in the flashes of lightning, you can identify at least three separate levels is your best guess based on the positioning of arrow loops on the lower levels and then proper windows on the upper two levels. Uh, as you're looking ahead of you, there is a rise to get to the tower, what was probably a Mott and Bailey system at one time, and you see the bastion with a stair leading up to it off to uh, the right-hand side from the approach you're on. How, what would you like to do? Uh, well, since none of you have shelter. Yeah. <laughs> I do not require shelter. How do you hold up in the weather, though? I mean, don't get this well, tin man thing going, or? <laughs> due to my parts being both, uh, tree-like substances, as well as uh, metallic substances. Usually, water technically nourishes the system. Ah. Very well. Wow. That, as well as I am a conducive lightning rod. <laughs> yes. OK. I have so many Point taken, and I am wearing, even though it's leather covered, a metal breastplate. Yeah, let's take shelter, guys, if we can. <laughs> So are, are you approaching the tower uh, directly ahead? Are you wandering around the base? Uh, like I said, the bastion with the stairs is slightly off to your um, right as you approach the hillock. And as you as you are watching, a bolt of lightning does come down from the sky, but the tower is the tall structure. It rises well above the tree line, and you notice it hits something at the very top of the tower, which uh, in the afterglow, something at the very top glows white hot and then slowly fades to red and then goes dark again. There are no lights on in any of the tower windows at this time. OK. Um, I'd like to like approach the door of the tower. Certainly. As you walk up the hillock, you notice there is a path that clearly denotes, but it's heavily overgrown in places and definitely worn away. Uh, I'm going to cast part, dancing lights and have four orbs of light just kind of slowly rotate around us. So we're announcing our presence as we come up. Okay, excellent. Um, as you walk up, you will notice that this, to get to the, the first floor of the tower is well above the hillock. Um, so there is a, a set of stairs that goes up part way and then switches back to finish its rise to the archway that is the entrance to the tower. Um, as you approach it, clearly um, you're all a little different, differently sized, but two of you can fit to abreast as you go up the stairs to the tower entrance. So who's going up first? I just need some uh, marching order on this one. Well, I'll go first. So we have Nimoy. Is, are you going single file or two abreast? What? How's that going? Oh, should I stand, stand next to him? You can stand two abreast, yeah, and go up. About Me. the same height. Yeah, we're the same height. I'm worried about width. We got we got more. <laughs> well, Me and I'm, my a, five I'm, a, I'm a skinny turtle, so it's okay. Oh, okay. So I'm a and fat turtle. As we approach the door, I'll use Mage Hand to knock on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so as you get to the top, uh, just uh, by way of description, there is a slight ledge, so you can come off the stairs and stand comfortably on the ledge. But it is an archway system, so as you look, there's a double, uh, double door right there at the base. You can both stand in front of the doors. Um, you can stand at the top of the stairs. You can stand on the stairs. You can stand on the ledge. As you look above, you do see there is a portcullis that is raised and is sitting above. It would come down in front of this wooden door uh, during a time of crisis, but obviously it's currently up. So are you knocking from the stairs or from? Just uh, from uh, right on the landing. I'm I just don't want to touch the door. I'll step back a hair onto the stairs. You're, so we have Bolafruta on the stairs and Nimoy on the landing? The first landing okay. spot. Um, so as you knock, you notice off to your left, a little shuttered alcove. The shutter gets pulled back and a voice calls out, go away. It's storming and we can't reach our home. This is Nimoy's response to it. Yep. The shutter opens back up, says, I don't care and shuts it again. <laughs> I, I take the mage hand over and knock on the shutter. Shutter opens again. Pardon me, but the laws of hospitality dictate that you shelter travelers in a storm. You're wet. It shuts the thing. 
Hmm. Well, Nimoy, third time's a charm usually. So that was exactly my thought. Knock three times. Yes, human redundancy does uh, dictate multiple attempts. Right. Humans are shutter, ridiculous. The shutter opens again. What do you want? Uh, I have an invitation to the party. So the voice on the other side, clearly confused by what you said, says, um, can I see the invitation? Well, I have it here somewhere, but I can't find it out here in the dark and rain. So v clearly very, very confused. Uh, make a, a um, charisma persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Total persuasion. Yep, here I go. Oh, that's a 19. Wow. He said, all right, the shutter goes shut. It's quiet for a moment. And then you, you hear something being lifted on the other side. You assume it's a bar on the other side of the door. And one side of the door comes open and says, come in. Come on, guys. Oh, <laughs> just you. Hey. Okay. I don't think I can enter without my retinue. So the, the the person on the other side shuts the door again. You hear whispering on the other side. Door opens. Says, "Fine, come in." Come on, guys. <laughs> so as you come up, you, you make your I way decline. into the, <laughs> the little entryway. It's a very narrow, as you can imagine. This was defensive structure, so it's a small, narrow room. You see a wizened, hunched figure dressed in what was probably very stylish clothing at one time, but is now worn and faded. Their bald pate and gray hair uh, hang stringily from their, their shoulders. And he moves with a shuffling step. He looks at all of you. You're all standing there, I assume, at this point. You're inside. Oh, yeah. Shake <laughs> the rain from my fur. Yeah. He, so he looks at Bola Fruta directly and says, stop that. You're getting water on my floor. What? <laughs> I'll, uh, I don't like you. <laughs> I'll press the digit water a tate away. Oh, he looks at you and he's not disgusted. But that's the best you can say by the expression. <laughs> <laughs> Over the next several seconds, you see water absorb underneath the plates and everything of, uh, of uh, Z. You see kind of like, and you see this kind of like faint purple glow underneath where he's absorbing water. <laughs> That's just creepy. <laughs> so like, the character definitely looks at you and with a curious expression. Is it? And then he looks at all four of you. Is it? How long will you be here? Well, until the storm passes, until after the party is over. He looks at you queerly again, Nimoy, and going, uh, "Yeah, quizzical look." He says, "You can hang your coats on the hooks." Don't drip water on my floor. This unit is sufficiently dry. <laughs> I love that part. Uh, I love the Z. Sean is obliges. He pulls back his, his, his cowl and, and shakes his head in like that 70s whatever slow motion thing. And it's just feathered again. <laughs> hangs, hangs, it, hangs up his cloak. Okay. The, the caretaker who opened the door nods uh, and then says, Follow me. And you notice that as you move from the bastion, it's a very narrow, short, uh, with a heavy lintel door that moves from the bastion into the circular tower that seems to be the main complex of the, of the building. As you move through, it becomes very apparent that the only light source anywhere in this floor is from the lantern being held by the caretaker who opened the door. He's, and he looks to all of you as you each slowly and carefully step through this narrow doorway and says, stay close. And then he begins walking along to the right as you pass in on the circular hallway, begins going to the right and begins heading that way. He doesn't glance back to make sure you're following. What are all of you doing? Striking um, a torch. Freaking dark. <laughs> well, you have Nimoy's Nimoy's globes. The that right. spell's still active, correct? Yeah, dancing lights. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So that should be lighting it up too. Uh, the kind of pulsing through like soft colors: purple, green, blue, yellow, kind of dancing around, just pulsing. 
It's a disco feel. I was about to yeah. say. Light, know. light disco. Slow light. song. Okay. How Slow deep song. is your love playing? Yeah, pretty much. Like That's good. <laughs> How deep is your love would be good. Um, um, I didn't take that spell. Sorry. Z will start following, but he'll... Uh, I can uh, do the light show. Z will start asking questions of the... Uh, query, caretaker, is that your name, or do you wish to be called an other nomenclature? So, uh, he, he, he looks at you, kind of back over his shoulder, and says, says uh, just call me Valet. Valet. Volvo? I'm the valet. Volvo? Uh, Query, <laughs> was that the name you were born with or given? Title. Given. Congratulations upon your title. <laughs> I love the Z, Z response. That's great. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. <laughs> so, as Z, since you are actively engaged with the valet, um, mm -hmm. roll a perception check for me. Oh, Z is not perceptive. Uh, that's a five. Yeah, it <laughs> looks good. Everything's everything's fine. Uh, now, who is the last one in line in the marching order? Uh, probably Shaughness or oh, uh, Bola Fruta or Shaughnessy. I was going to go last. Okay. 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 Uh, for so for whoever's last, I just need a, a perception check as well. Perception check. Rolling. <coughs> Sixteen. As Bola Fruta, uh, your bovine eyes looking around, it seems that the shadows are moving in an odd pattern, uh, and you can't quite tell whether it is because of the dancing lights that Nimoy has cast that are bouncing around the middle of the group, or if it's something else outside the nimbus of the light from the lantern being carried by the ballet. Is it more? Is it something more? So as, as you pass through, the valet stops in a very short walk, um, stops at a door that is on the right. So you came in, went to the right, and followed around. And now there's a door that leads to the right as well, which from your perception of the outside would be the, the first tower, um, the sort of the concrete rectangular structures outside the main circular keep. Uh, it looks like a room is being opened up in there. He unlocks the door, opens it up, and beckons all four of you to come inside. Ballet, before entering room, query. <laughs> Number of participants in said, he does quote signs, party. I love the fact that the, the Warforge does air quotes. Yeah, <laughs> air quotes. Uh, and, and the valet is looking at you and said, what party? We are designates of the party. How many other designates are at said party? <laughs> There's, and you see the valet specifically count each of you in turn. There are four of you. Uh, four current designates. How many possible designates will be entering other than the four listed? He looks around at all four of you and once again goes, one, two, three. You see him counting, and he, he <laughs> you see his mouth moving. One, two. There's four of you. There are no other designates in this castle structure. No. It is just yourself, valet. Oh uh, no, Mauve is here too. Query, who is Mauve? My sister. Is she as charming as you are? More. <laughs> oh, wow. But to answer Turn out your, the lights and call her over. <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your your query, Z, hey, we bring the party. So we are the party. <laughs> so we're the party. So the, the valet is looking at the Warforge. <laughs> She's very curious about this. And he, he you know, he, he's still, he, he's, gives Nimoy a weird look over this whole party thing, basically. And he, he looks at all of you and says, you can stay here till the storm is over, but don't leave this room. He's very insistent. Don't leave. Query. He sets the lantern down. <laughs> Query, valet. Are there negative aspects to leaving the room? 
not for me. And then he steps back and shuts the door. No. Uh, immediately after he shuts the door and we step, after we stepped in and shut the door, I will uh, burn an action and uh, detect the location uh, within 60 feet of us, any celestial fiend or undead. Um, Six, and, any, and any consecrated or desecrated place or object, anything within and, 60 feet. Is that 60 feet, uh, it's spherical? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Spherical? Mm -hmm. And you're saying undead. Um, how, so, how uh, from, your, from your character class, just to, so I make sure I give you accurate information, mm -hmm. how much detail of the direction and location would you receive? Uh, let me double check here. I don't think it's like, a, I just know, I think it's more or less that I'm aware that they are within, any celestial fiends or undead are within 60 feet of me. You Not are aware that of an undead exactly within 60 are. feet. You, you definitely get a strong resonance that there's something undead within 60 feet of you. And I would go so far as to hazard that you feel it's close enough that it's probably oh. on this level. I know it's location within 60 feet of me. You know it's on this level. <laughs> unless, it, or unless it's behind total cover. So I know it's on the level with us. Okay. Yeah, you know it's on the level. Okay. Something Just isn't on the level, right guy. <laughs> uh, um, I just dropped something dead over here in the corner, boys. Uh, meat sacks. There is an undead within 60 feet of us upon this level. Please carry yourselves appropriately. Uh, Shaughnessy should be tries called a meat box. the door to see if it's locked. Yeah, the door's locked. Carry. Nimoy prefers the nomenclature wheat box or Nimoy? Nimoy. Nimoy. Within group, or if I'm speaking to more than one creature of fleshy substance, you will be meat spoken to as meat sack. <laughs> Agreed? It's still appropriate. I'm a yeah, sack we, in a box. We are, we are a bunch of meat sacks. So, yeah, seems appropriate. <laughs> it's more like a lunch box. So I get the meat box. I'm a sack within a box. Yes. <laughs> so Shaughnessy has recognizes that the door was locked when you left, and you, as you glance around, Shaughnessy, uh, having tried the door, you recognize the the door is um, it's not insubstantial, but it's not designed to withstand a siege like the exterior doors to the tower. Um, it's a, it is a single door again, like many of the doors that pass from the inner keep to the outside towers. It is narrow and it is short and is heavy wood with banded uh, with bands of iron securing it to the wall. Around the room, the room is a larger um, space is, is several feet, um, almost 20 feet long, um, 15 feet wide coming off the tower. And it looks like um, as you're looking around, it may have been a barracks space at one time. There are multiple cots. Many of them are broken in disarray. Most of them are missing their mattresses at this point. Um, and a thick layer of dust covers everything in the room at this point. At the back of the room, there is a, a um, screen that screens off about two thirds of uh, across the way. Uh, you can see there's a little um, pass through on that, but it basically screens off an area. And you could probably surmise, all of you are uh, well-traveled adventurers, it was probably an officer space on the other side of that, or someone in charge would have been on the other side of that barracks at one point. I'm going to go check it out. Yeah. I'm going to have to have to write a commentary on this uh, Airbnb that we stumbled <laughs> upon. <laughs> the put it in, are suck. And, <laughs> and put it in ye old Yelp review. <laughs> is there um, happen to be a keyhole in that door? There is. There is a keyhole. It, it is a very basic lock. It certainly was not really intended to withstand any master criminal. So just if I look, is there a key in the hole or just... You do not see a key in the hole. Um, okay. Are there any windows in the room by chance, like, or any spots for like arrow? There are arrow, arrow slits that would, are providing uh, the occasional flashes of light from outside from lightning, uh, okay. are illuminating multiple arrow slits in this tower, a um, couple on the, the wall that faces out, and certainly one from where you're standing, Z, that faces uh, off to the side. 
uh, you can assume there's probably one facing off to the side on the other side of the curtain screen that's at the other end as well. Okay, but no larger, no larger windows that one could open or get out. Okay. Not at, not on this first floor. <coughs> recall from outside, the first floor was pretty much all defensive windows, uh, nothing really for comfort at this level. I can uh, open so, this door, but it'll make a lot of noise. So for Bowl of Fruta and Shaughnessy, uh, you both were sort of looking around the other way. Uh, mm -hmm. you, when you look it, around the screen, you do see a small uh, writing desk, uh, secretary's desk against one wall, and you see a, a cot with a now slowly rotting and, and fa uh, molded mattress, but clearly a straw stuffed mattress on uh, a cot was behind that screen as well. And a, and a trunk is at the foot of that cot. There's always a trunk. There's always <laughs> a trunk. Um, okay. Uh, Shaughnessy will walk over and investigate the trunk. <laughs> He's not going to touch it, but it's just going to kind of look at it. <laughs> make a perception roll. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, perception. Let's see. Okay, 20, not natural. Um, not you you said you did not touch the trunk, right? You're just- Yeah, looking. I did not touch it. Okay, as you examine the trunk, you can see the, the lid is broken on the trunk. It's, uh, and it doesn't look like it was smashed intentionally. It just looks like it is aged and the wood is becoming, uh, is weak. And so it's causing some um, disarray uh, just from age at this point. Um, other than that, from the outside of the trunk, you don't see anything unusual about the trunk. Uh, it looks like a footlocker for uh, a soldier in this tower. Okay. All right. No black and white t-shirts or a whistle on the inside the footlocker. So, <laughs> are, you, are you opening the footlocker? Uh, Here, I can use this javelin to open it. I was going to say, either, yeah, yeah uh, I'll let Bola Fruta, I'll step aside <laughs> and let Bola Fruta <laughs> investigate the. <laughs> <laughs> It does a, a, a hoof stamp the, the, the trunk. Kicks the lid right off of that bad boy. Okay. It, uh, again, this wood is, has, has dry rot. Uh, as you kick it, it all but powders the lid. <laughs> now the, the trunk is open. Um, you give me a perception roll as you look inside. Nine. I don't see shit. There's too much powder. Yeah, yeah. It's the 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 uh, frayed wood caused you to blink. Your eyes are watering. You can't see anything inside this trunk. Uh, there doesn't appear to be anything inside the trunk, though. I mean, you you got that much, but um, I'm walking away. I'll get out of the way. I don't see anything. I walk away. Okay. Uh, ha has the dust settled or whatever yeah, at this yes, point? It only a moment. Most of it is now coating the wet bowl. Uh, that walk through the the, the dust cloud. <laughs> the wet ball. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. I mean, if there's nothing of regard in it or something like that, I'm just going to disregard the locker. You look, look around. Inside it, or are you just walking? Yeah, I'm going to look inside. Then yeah. roll me a perception roll. Okay. This is uh, 24, 19, okay. and five. Yeah, so as you look inside, there's really nothing left inside. Whatever may have been in has clearly faded and rotted away at this point, whatever it may have been. Um, but you do notice that there's a, a slight panel at the bottom that seems like it would slide aside or lift off if you wanted to, to look inside it. And as you, um, I'm assuming you've looked at it, you don't yeah. see any reason for it to be a trap or anything of that nature, really. You just happen to see underneath there a, a pair of oddly shaped shears. Okay, how how so? <laughs> how oddly shaped? Well, they they as you lift them up, they look like shears you would use to um, shear an animal, which um, you could test out on bola fruta if you wanted to. Do <laughs> one. Um, or or they could be used to, to uh, you know um, take care of problems with male animals in barnyards as well if they needed to there so, you go yeah, you can test it out on bowl of fruit if you want to <laughs> uh, but they are sort of a diamond shaped um 
mm-hmm. blades, uh, you know, sort of, or a leaf shaped blade, I should say, more of a leaf shaped blade, short handle, and then they're connected by a spring at the, on little iron loops at the end of the handle is a spring that connects the two pieces. It looks like they could come apart, but they clearly, while they're together, if you've ever seen those shears, mm-hmm. just action pull them together and they will slice. Okay. Uh, you do notice there's some faint script written around uh, the handles. There is some almost like linen wrappings that wrap the handles, um, but you can't really make it out the, the way they are uh, in the room. I, I'm assuming, again, Nimoy's back in the other side and you're on the opposite side of the screening wall. Okay. Uh, can I read the writing that's uh, inscribed on the shears? Uh, what are your languages? Uh, my languages are Halfling, Common, and Sylvan. Uh, you cannot. Okay. All right. Um, I'll present them to Z. Oh, I got a high intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I tell Z that a computer. This, this is what I have found. And it's just like, uh, are you able to make anything of this uh, as far as the writing that's on on the shears. One moment, deciphering, deciphering. He speaks uh, common, draconic, and uh, primordial. Uh, well, tell me again, common? Common, dr- uh, primordial, and draconic. Yep, you cannot make out anything on the shears. Unfortunately, okay. my database does not carry this language. Ah, okay. Um, anything else uh, about them, uh, looking at them? The linen wrapped around them, uh, just basic like uh, like muslin linen or something like that? It appears to be, yes. Okay, all right. Other than this extensive script that is on the linen as it's been wrapped around them. Okay. Oh, the, the script is on the linen. It's, on the, it's around on the linen. Okay, I am not taking that off. <laughs> Shaughnessy is a little, uh, you know, superstitious. And yeah, yeah, that kind of smacks of something that maybe it shouldn't be taken off. <laughs> so okay. um, that's just his re- halfling reasoning, you know, because I mean, he's just superstitious. So I don't think you have to defend that decision to anyone, Shaughnessy. I think you need to defend it with a dissertation for the next one one hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Uh, so as I arrive to this conclusion, uh, <laughs> <laughs> observing... <laughs> He's already broken down the door and left the room. <laughs> well, to that point, as Shaughnessy is examining and has had this communication with Z, there is a rattle in the door and the door opens. Oh, good. You're back. A matronly woman enters carrying a lantern as well uh and this time she has some refreshments which she brings in and drops them down and she looks at all of you sniffs sneers picks up her lantern and heads back to the door query are you marv Mauve? oh mauve mauve oh. okay i couldn't remember query oh. are you mauve mold uh. Yeah, like, like a fungus mold. No, like the color. Like I the color. Imagine. Move. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna cast sleep at uh, second level. <laughs> uh, tell me my defense for that one. Um, you don't have one. <laughs> I'm just rolling seven yeah, d eight sleep and applying that to hit points. Yep, roll it and tell me how what your number is. Um, that's eleven. Uh, and six is 17 and nine is 20. What is 26 and one more and eight is 30, whatever that is for. So as you cast sleep, you see Mauve turn to look at you. She clearly recognizes that the spell is coming from you. And there is a moment where you're not sure it's going to take effect. And you see her begin to do something with her own hands and begin to verbalize something before she drops. Do I recognize any of the verbalization, like maybe get me a hint of it or not? Um, You can roll an arcana check to see. 
<laughs> only an expert as, in that. As uh, so that's to drop uh, zeal run over and like thirteen from falling down hard. Plus nine is uh, twenty one. Twenty two. Yeah, math can't do. Twenty two. Mm, Z the I... gentleman robot. My <laughs> creatures need protection. Of course. I think you see that she was probably trying to cast a spell that was going to hurt you, but it's not familiar to you. It doesn't look like it's a wizarding okay. spell. Z, the appropriate course of action would be to tie her up and gag her if you want to protect the flesh bags. Which flesh bags are we continuing to protect? All of the flesh bags except her would be harmed if she comes awake and can speak and move. Agreed. Uh, so he will, <laughs> as he picks, he will pick her up, place her onto one of the cots, and uh, use some uh, rope to tie her hands. <laughs> I put her to sleep because I didn't want to hurt her. So Z will tie up her hands and uh, tie up her hands, and then like gently put a gently put a gag around mm -hmm. her mouth, like just enough to cover her lips over, but like but doesn't do it. So it's like cinches hard. It's just enough where it's like covering her mouth but not her nose. <laughs> Such a gentleman. That's, that's what we like in our, our onabatons. Uh, so First rule can't kill humans. Nimoy, your spell, how long does your a spell minute. last? Okay. So you guys have a minute. Doors open though. <laughs> what are you doing? Doors open and there are two lanterns laying. Larry, what are our next actions now that we have placed Mob to sleep? I, I'm well, gonna. She'll wake up. I'm gonna moment. fart and pull the blanket over her head under it. Again, harmless oh, but annoying. Oh, always the gentleman. Uh, <laughs> you realize that's a mating ritual for ball fruit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It With the lights go. off, that's a mighty fine woman. <laughs> well, that's not the only turtle in the room now. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, let's. Um, uh, I say we make use of these lanterns and probably make our way out of this room. You guys just tell me your actions and tell me who's yeah. picking up lanterns. Well, I don't need a lantern, so Did I'll head say out. There was two lanterns. Well, we'll put one to the front and I'll hold one in the back. Uh, Z will go and pick up one lantern, and uh, who will be leading our party? And which way will we be going? I just went out of this room. Well, you were you you were uh, Doctor Nimoy. There can lead the way. <clears throat> I think we should find out what's going on. Didn't you say there was an undead somewhere? There is an undead within sixty feet of us. Well, that might be a source of information. Yes, we will query the undead, and if the responses are negative, the undead will be eliminated from this plane of existence. Now, Z, sixty feet. Did you? Uh... Um, on this level, detect up, down, or up, back. down. Yeah, sixty on feet this on this level. On this level, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. The spell exact. allows him to yeah. know the exact yeah. location, but you unless know, they're unless they're behind full cover. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Very well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cast that again, though. <laughs> Query, Bolafruta. Was that sarcasm? Uh, answer. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, afterwards you nice. hear this kind of hot 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 <laughs> nice yep that was humor again i don't get it either <laughs> it's not lost on me i'm uh, chuckling i'm thinking it's pretty funny because i'm laughing at the two that don't get it so, yeah. yeah humor still seems to escape me <laughs> and he's like point as he's still looking around, like seeing which way he can go, that's still on this level that might lead him in the right direction. So there's, as you step back into the hallway, assuming I, what I'm hearing is Z's in the lead. Uh, I believe so. If yeah, Z, taking point will yeah. take the lead. generally means in the lead. So Z, roll a perception check as you step back out into the hallway for me. Okay. Tactically, that might be best. How long does uh, your channel divinity go for? Um. Uh... Doesn't really say. It just tells me. I pretty much. It's like a ping, mm -hmm. and so I know I remember where the ping is. Okay. Much. Oh no! Okay. Already like. So with that, um, yeah, it doesn't give me like a.
time frame. I can just okay. I just know where it's at. And you you have the sense as you you know it's almost um, from where you're at. If you were to step into the hallway, the sense is definitely coming along the right. So if you follow the curving hallway farther to the right, that is the direction the thing okay. came from. As you step out into the hallway with your lantern. Oh, sorry. You okay, I'll pay attention now. Okay. Um, is it? I can't. 15. That's 15 plus two, 17. That was decent. Okay. And again, as you step in the hallway and you start moving that way, you notice the shadows move oddly around you, almost fleeing ahead of you with the lantern. But you quickly walk down the hallway. It's not a terribly long walk. And you see another opening, which you think is in, it goes outside the central keep into one of the sides. Again, this one has a door that's standing open already. You hear clattering coming from inside this room. And this is clearly the room where you felt the ping from the undead. You do have an overall sense, now that you're in the main keep, of just undead things all around you. But... This is the one that you had the ping for when you cast the spell. Meat sex. Current evaluation. Undead is in the room in front of us. Undead are within all aspects of this tower. Slash keep. Slash structure. Retort. Thank you. Bucket of bolts. Well, sounds like a dead man's party. Wow. The dead okay. man's party. Uh, yeah. Larry, who has bolts? <laughs> I've, I have witch bolt. <laughs> Nimoy, <laughs> Bolafruta was speaking to you as a bucket of bolts. I suppose bucket would be as apt as box, but I have a bit too many holes for bucket. You are more of a shell of bolts. Wow, this has turned into waiting to get for Goodell <laughs> episode here, folks. Um, All right, uh, I'm gonna zeal check the door. Okay, I think the door's open. Oh. It, it's already open, and again, oh, there's oh. a heavy <laughs> you duck down and, and walk in. Um, as you are you walking in, checking the corner, how are you? Uh, Z will so walk I'm in, um, Z will walk in, looking around the room, and he will go, Query. Undead creature, please reveal your location for questioning. Roll I'll dancing lights that me. shit up again now. Roll a what? Die 12 for me. D12? Okay. Yep. And I'll send dancing lights out into the room to 12. Kind of spread 12. illumination. As you uh, move into the room, this is clearly the kitchens for the, the keep. You see mm -hmm. a large... Um, you know, cold oven built into the exterior wall farthest away from everything. You see a large table for food preparation in the middle of the room. Things are hanging from spits and racks all over the place. And you, you do see that clearly something is preparing food. Currently, there are uh, some foodstuffs that are kind of unidentifiable already out on the table. You see a large cleaver on the table, several other knives. Um, something is being currently carved and is being prepared for cooking, even though there's no fire. You see off again to the right, as you look into this room, you see something rummaging in a pantry uh, a little farther back. Uh, Zeal, uh, once again, repeat, query, undead creature. Please come out for questioning. So as, as you're talking, um, <laughs> something large, quite large, seems to move from the pantry, its arms laden with supplies uh, that it's pulled out of this uh, cupboard. And it really doesn't seem to recognize that you're there. It sort of moves slowly, sluggishly, uh, almost robotically uh, as it moves back into the room and drops the supplies on the the table and begins going through the motions of preparing food. As See, you it is quite the possible creature, they don't have speech. It's uh, as you examine the creature, you you see that you know the bones stick through on here, and the flesh seems quite gray and decayed. 
um, but it seems to be quite capable of manipulating items and it seems to be preparing something to eat. Um, would, can I make like a roll to see if I can, I mean, I, I think I know what the creature is, but can Z- yeah, go ahead and roll okay. the dice. Okay. Uh, what do you want me to roll for like a- uh, If you have Arcana, you can certainly do that. Um, would that be like an insight? You could do, actually, uh, I would let you do either nature or arcana. If okay. one of those is higher. Neither of them are higher. They're both closer. He knows he's got, he's got religion. He knows religion, but. I'll let you do religion. Okay. I think that would be a fair to argue with religion. Okay. Uh, 1921. Yeah, this is clearly an ogre zombie. <laughs> Get him, Ray. How is he dressed? I mean, is he dressed like like a undead or like somebody put it in a uniform? It's or in a ratty tux. <laughs> That's what I was gonna ask. He's he's dressed like a cook in the kitchen of a key. Oh, okay. So he's got a chef's jacket on, and yeah, yeah. He's he's ready to roll. Okay, Frankie. What do you call the hat? A toque. A toque. Toque. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I think I will. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to California, folks. <laughs> hmm. Flashbags. This seems to be a creature of limited thought or usage. Yeah. Simplicity yeah. is its primary directive. <clears throat> mm. okay. Even creation. Does it this creature notice us or does it seem like it's more fixated on its task that it's been given? It's fixated on the task it's been given. Okay. Okay. So we're, he's clearly taking no notice of us, just, okay. Um, glancing about, uh, I'm not able to identify any kind of food type or source or anything like that. Uh, of the, of the, the meat mm -hmm. that's on the table, it looks decayed and, you're not sure where it came from. Okay. But the other pantry items that he has recently returned with and dropped on the table, those look like they're identifiable as traditional, you know, some kind of flour, some kind of um, cheese or, or other millet. Um, can of spam. Of flour. Spam. <laughs> several cans of spam. Yeah. Uh, there's some beans, bacon, and spam, some eggs, bacon, and spam. Spam. Um, so Is there spam, like spam, 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 eggs, bacon, spam, bacon, spam. and spam? And green eggs and spam. Mm. Um, oh, my favorite. So Z8, clearly, this would be it worthwhile. is actually preparing real food, except for the meat, which you can't identify. Okay. As you look around the room and you're sort of picking up on these items, um, one, everyone make a perception roll for me. Those of you that are sort of glancing around and you see the pantry, you see the, the, the pantry with cupboard, and you see a set of stairs going down and a set of stairs that go up on the far side of the kitchen. You can surmise that uh, these are narrow stairs. They were probably servant stairs that went up and down the tower. So for the serving staff to supply the, the lords and ladies of the tower at one time. Perception roll, what have you? 16. Uh, 15 for Sean. Six. <laughs> 11 for Z. Okay, so for Shaughnessy and Bola Fruta, the one thing you, you notice this you saw, again, this tower has nothing in currently in good repair that you've seen at all. And the kitchen was no exception. Once you move down the hallway and enter this room, you begin to also notice that there are just cobwebs everywhere in this tower. They touch so many surfaces of this tower. They hang down through cracks in all of the, the uh, mortar of the tower walls themselves. It's just full of it. And when you add that to the dust, it's really just disgusting repair. Okay. It's being held together by cobwebs. I don't know. Set fire to them and find out. I can do that. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Z walks out of the room. He's <laughs> no. If you're gonna if you're gonna set fire to it, Z will walk out. Press okay. to digitate, press to digitate, press to digitate. <laughs> All right, so what do you guys got an undead ogre right in front of us? It's, yeah. Has he not noticed us at all, or he just don't give a rat's ass? He just doesn't. 
you guys at this point have not done anything to interfere with his function of preparing dinner. He has not paid any attention or noticed your presence at all. Well, that doesn't bother me at all, then. I do like to kill stuff. Let's, Let's go find something dead. active to kill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Okay. So, I agree. Um, it's been a while. Okay, so we notice uh, a stairway up and a stairway down as far as like a serv servant's passage. Um, yep. Okay, that's one vote for up. So uh, you, everybody else? Two of, two of the exterior towers you have looked at, uh, you have not completed the circuit around the inside of the tower. Okay. Uh, you know there were at least three exterior towers to the keep. So. Oh, okay. But, I'll bring that 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 fact up to the other say there there are other things that we can can search uh within this level or we can move up in this tower and move on to another level uh which which seems agreeable for you guys up 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 it is okay. are you going up the is there everybody want to go up i'll say down if everybody says up of course he would. <laughs> That's the Frank we know and love, right? There. That's it. That's <laughs> it. I just got to stay in my way. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, yeah, if we want to go up, I, I guess we'll we'll head up. So Okay. Um, again, as you go up the stairs, I assume you're all carrying the, the lanterns with you mm -hmm. or you yeah. the spell run. Yeah. You go to the second floor. Again, these are narrow stairs. They are not built for comfort. They are built for servants to carry things to serve folks at different levels. You enter into the same tower that the kitchens were on. You go, now you're entering out into the, the second floor of that um, tower. Uh, and you enter into a space that is, again, similar to the barracks in size, but you notice it is filled with artwork. There's artwork paintings on the wall, there are statues on pedestals, all in this space. And unlike down below where there's a narrow doorway, this space opens up to the inner inner corridor of the central keep. Uh -huh. So it's a very open space, lots of art pieces all around. Do the eyes of the art follow you as you move? <laughs> uh, are you carrying a lantern? Yes. Yeah, as you're carrying a lantern, it looks like the eyes follow you. They're so well painted. What is the context uh, of the, the paintings and the artwork? I, I mean, thought it was shadows at one time, guys, but I'm telling you. There's something not right about this artwork here. These <laughs> guys, there's something not right here. <laughs> What's the subject of the artwork, actually? Uh, most of the artwork is what you would expect to find in a manor house. There seems to be various relatives, uh, generations of probably owners of the house. If you look closely, there are name plaques at the bottom. Um, the family, uh, is, you can't really make out the name something something erder or something at the bottom. You can't really make it out. Um, but several generations, you see the clothing change on these. You do start to notice that many of the, the um, uh, dress and style all seem to be quite old. There's nothing mm -hmm. more recent or current. Uh, the pedestal art, uh, the statuary and such, mythological themes, generally speaking. Um, uh -huh. Some erotic themes? As a matter of fact, I was going to ask that. that. <laughs> yeah, was erotic. there erotic art? Yeah, I don't know what the equivalent in uh, this land would be to the Kama Sutra, but definitely that sense of bas reliefs of the Kama Sutra are definitely on some of these pedestals. Cool. Um, this is the best place. I'm going to reach in my bag and pull out a, some burritos, and then I will use prestidigitation to warm them up and offer them around. Burrito. Anybody want a burrito? Beef and bean. No? Just bean? Don't... All right. <laughs> you know, no, I'm, I'm going to munch burritos while I view art. <laughs> Hold that from behind his back. I'm a little concerned. No, it's came <laughs> out of my bag of holding. Oh, I didn't see the bag. bag so, uh, that's okay. I'll, I think I'll stick with my dry tack. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like beef. I do not require sustenance. Uh, Shaughnessy will pass. He's, he's that hungry at the moment. So I'm sure those will keep for a little while. Or so. if uh, like Z will walk up to later. one of the eyes, like in the painting, that are follow, like, and he'll 
poke at the eye. He'll just, <laughs> he'll, he'll just go, just literally jab at one eye. That's keep so, this place in mind. There's a lot of flammable stuff in here. Uh, query. Uh, one thing I wanted to know is like the gender roles in the paintings. Do they seem appropriate? Like to the pronouns that I think these are all pictures of actors because they're you know it's guys dressing like women. That's what I was asking, you know. <laughs> is it obviously, you know, like maybe, I don't know, masculine no, features on a woman? Uh, I, make an investigation. Okay. Check. <laughs> oh, man, that was gone. All right. Uh, investigation? Okay. Eh, not too bad. Uh, 20, not natural. Uh, so it, it's hard to make out because as you're looking at the pictures, several of the heads have been defaced in the paintings. Oh, okay. Um, so while maybe occasionally you see a shape and a body body style or body shape that could fall one side or the other of the of the traditional sex um, um, presumption, it's not clear because so many of their faces have been removed. The only thing you notice know, there's only one face that has not been damaged or touched out of the entire length of paintings. Um, and that is a, of a, um, a younger woman, mm -hmm. um, clearly, uh, or appears to be a woman in traditional dress uh, with exceptionally long, beautiful blonde hair. Um, only in one gentleman. picture out of, or same person in multiple pictures is the only one that's not touched. In the salon, there's only one painting that hasn't been defaced, and it's of this woman. But whoever she's standing next to, that face has been um, damaged and scratched out. Is there so name as name? he's poking a hole through somebody's eye, um, it's not a problem because the face has already been scratched and destroyed. Okay. Is is there a nameplate under the woman? Uh, yes. It says... Uh, uh, Damn it, Janice. Says, what is it? It does not. It says Francis. Oh, okay. Or... <laughs> Francis, not Janet. Not Janet. Okay. Francis Berger. You can't make it last name. Just says Francis. I just go with some of the other last names I saw where it looks like it said Erder. I'm Erder. 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 I guess we'll continue to yeah continue on our merry way. You can go right or left from the salon, or unlike downstairs, downstairs as you walked around, there was never an opening that you saw the entire time you circled the bottom. It was all concrete wall on the inside corridor. You know there's a room on in the middle, but you never had a chance to find a door or anything inside. Up here, that inner wall is missing exactly opposite of the salon. Matter of fact, what you see is a little landing that juts out, what you assume is over the room that is below, and a heavy curtain is drawn across that landing. Oh, I want to You can still go to curtain. the right or left on the inner corridor, just like you did below, but right now there's a heavy curtain that you can step out into a landing from as well. I want to peek through curtain, curtain number one. Give curtain, me curtain, number curtain. one. I guess curtain number one it is. I want some big yeah. box. <laughs> So what are you doing with the curtain? I'm yanking it open, you know, like right. a freaking bowl would do. Bowl, bowl of Fruita. Is, uh, I'm that's following what Bowl right. of Fruita right for that curtain. All right, so everyone who just said they're looking through the curtain, I just need them to make a roll for me. I need you to make, hold on one second. Uh, I'm shaking. What kind of roll? What kind of roll? Uh, the kind I with dice. So make, uh, yeah. there's going to be a couple of rolls here. So first off, make a dexterity save for me. Oh, not 20. Oh, nice. Uh, let's see, dexterity with... save. Okay. Um, Is that everybody or just 15. the people looking if, behind the if, curtain? If you were going to move up towards the curtain, dexterity save. 20, if standing back. 22 for Sean Essie. So... Okay. Apparently Z is the only one standing back. <laughs> okay. So as you pull the curtain aside, now you hear um, as you're approaching um, the curtain. Um, no, well, this is, it, there's a little bit of pat a pattern here. So as you're approaching the curtain, you hear the lively oh, sounds of a raucous party and feast coming from 
what you presume now as you're approaching it to be the main hall below. Um, you definitely hear the sounds of food clattering, the, pla the plates, music playing, etc. cetera. So I'm going to holler out, I the found curtain, the party as I pull back the uh, curtain. You rip the curtain back. Uh, and what you notice is one, this is the player's gallery that you're pulling the curtain off of. So immediately in front of you are four chairs with four musicians sitting in those four chairs. Um, oh, no, however, no, no, no. there is no light at all in the room below. It's completely dark or appears to be completely dark. The only light coming from your lanterns or from the spell the Nemo is maintaining. The other thing you quickly notice is that the four players are all skeletons. Now the music and the sound does not stop, but there's no movement from the four skeletons as you've ripped the curtain hmm. away. Oh, an illusion, now, perhaps? I'm gonna poke at him with my axe. <laughs> I'm gonna send the dancing lights out into the middle of that space. Okay, so uh, roll initiative for Nimoy and Bola Fruta. So tell me who does what for Bola Fruta. Rolls <laughs> a twenty-two. Oh. And Bola we might as well initiative for Z and Shaughnessy at the same time. Okay. Uh, let's see. You were nice. I'll get you to roll again. Fifteen. Uh, Shaughnessy rolled low. Uh, his, um, which we call it, his initiative roll was only seven. Should rolled it by hand. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Wolofruta touches the skeleton with his axe first. All right. So, let's begin with Wolofruta. Roll a die 20 wisdom save for me. Wisdom save. I rolled a dirty 19. Dirty little 19. Nice to see you What's didn't whiz it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So for a brief moment, Bola Fruta, uh, yeah. you, you feel slightly faint. And Whew. as you sort of regain your senses, you notice that uh, the lights are on down below and you see the folks down below merrily going through this party. You see all Normal these lords people? and ladies uh, down below. You see the four players playing their music uh, from the landing. There's a, a, someone with a leer. There's someone with uh, a symbol. Now the four players, the though, are, are, is that one of the ones I just poked that I thought was a skeleton? Yeah, you just poked. You thought it was a skeleton, but you see that they are all um, actually, they're fine. You don't know what you saw before. It must have been an illusion, and you've broken through that illusion, and now you see the real thing. Except just as you start to get that sense of relief, that falls away, and the four skeletons on the landing all attack you with their weapons. So, uh, however, so they have surprise, so they're going to get one round to smack at you first. So let's roll those. Uh, okay. What is your AC? 17. 17? Yeah. So the natural 20 hits. Oh. Did right. you really think it was going to be that easy? Come on, Frank. Meets back on the menu, boys. Boys, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, and that 17 hit, and then that that hit. So three of them hit, one of them missed. The good news is you're they're hitting with improvised weapons, so that shouldn't hurt you too much, right? Like bow strings and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, four, six. Murder hobo dice, they're awesome. Aren't uh, they? No, I, I deal with that once a week. You're not allowed to use murder hobo dice. They screw me every week. Of course. So you took, uh, uh, you don't have a damage reduction at currently, right? Not currently. You took four, six, and three points of damage, so 13 total damage. Ow! As they just pummeled you. And then we go to the Ow. top of the order. Ball of Fruta, you get the first attack back. I'm going to rage. It's a raging At bull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody had to get it in. Oh, yeah. I'm swinging my great axe. My big old great axe at them bad boys. 
Uh, Magic numbers 13. They're just skeletons. I rolled a 22. Uh, that, how many five. attacks do you get? Huh? Do you get one I attack get a, or two attack? I think I only get the one attack right now. I, don't, I get a I frenzy bonus four. action, don't you? I think Barbarian's at uh, level you are. I think you yeah, get you get a attack. bonus action, which uh, weapon attacks as a bonus action on each of your turns after this one. All right, so... I don't know. I haven't played a barbarian. So, so this round you get you this round you get one attack. Yeah, next because, round is when I get yeah, the second. Because you bonus action rage, so then you yeah. get your attack. So you get one attack this round. Thank you. What's your damage? Oh, sorry. Uh, sixteen. Yeah, it it crumbles to the ground. That's one down. Uh, <laughs> and then Z and Nimoy both have uh, next up before the skeletons go again. Jesse, this keeps happening. Yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> uh, Z will step up. Uh, he will pull his maul uh, from his back, grasp it with his two hands, uh, and he will take a swing at the uh, skill. That is a 21 to hit. That'll hit. Um, and so he will... Uh, Let's do this for fun, just so we can see a little bit of uh, Z's <laughs> power. He will pump a Divine Smite into that. Do it! Um, just for fun, because he uh, yeah. it did hit it did hit Bolafruta, and he's not very happy with that uh, activity. So, that is overkill. We'll just say now. Oh, that was good. Uh, 9, 11... 17. Uh, he does 22 points of uh, damage. Eight of that is radiant. Uh, so it powders the skeleton? Yeah. Yep. It's gone. So that's two down. There's still one more uh, skeleton, two more skeletons active. One that hit Bolafruta, one that missed him. Well, whichever so. one is closest to me, I I'm going to uh, cast chill touch and uh, a skeletal hand will appear and choke it i make a ranged attack uh that's 19 on the die that'll hit i don't even need to add my spell attack bonus and then it does uh eight points of necrotic damage and because he's undead he has disadvantage on attacks versus me until the end of my next turn that one is still up and moving. You said it did eight damage? Eight damage. Necrotic. Was, it definitely, I think you sheared off a couple of uh, 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 rib bones and maybe a, maybe a humorous, but he's still active. So he's still going to swing his banjo at somebody next round. Uh, Shaughnessy, you are up next. Okay. Well, we also can't regain hit points. Not that that might be an issue. But. Um, Shaughnessy's going to attack the one that hasn't attacked yet, I believe. Is that the one Correct. by Bowler Fruiton? Okay. Yep, we have one that ha has not successfully attacked yet. Okay. Shaughnessy pulls out his his two gladiuses and uh, yeah, he swings for Ooh, the man. one. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, probably the first one does not hit. That was a nine. That one didn't. Yep. Uh, and the second one uh, yeah, both of them missed. Wow. Uh, ten. Ten. A nine and a ten. Oh, I'm out of practice, guys. <laughs> so, wow. Uh, but you've two down, two still standing. I need, at the at the end of the round, I need Bola Fruta and Z to make wisdom saves. Yeah, that can't be good. <laughs> wisdom save now. Yep. That is a oh, 30, no, I that one. 21. You're good. And see, what was yours? Yep, you 30, guys are both 20. good. Um, you do as you are swinging, because both of you engaged in combat. Three of you have stepped up and engaged in combat. The lights from Nemo have sailed out over the room. Um, as you look down below the room, it's lit up with its odd shadowing, but it's definitely lit up you see that there was a party down there and there are a whole lot of skeletons that are now starting to move and become Ooh, active so. in the room below. Oh, this party is lit. All right. Oh. 
this party is lit. Another um, very Somebody uh, so then as you look for, for Bola Fruta Z and Shaughnessy, you also realize as a player's gallery, there's not easy access from the, the room below up onto the player's gallery, cool. but there is a built-in ladder at the edge of the player's gallery for access how, up how and down much when needed. Elevation is that? One you are about oh, 20 fun. feet up. Players oh, gallery. <laughs> okay. So uh, skeletons get to attack before we move on. So one each, to, uh, one on Shaughnessy was still alive. Mm -hmm. So it will attack Shaughnessy okay. Uh, okay. in mist. And then the one, it's either going to attack, let's see, one through five, it'll be Z, one, six through 10, it'll be Bola Fruta. Bola Fruta, it's going to attack you again. Of course. In a mist. Awesome. So <laughs> next round, you do hear the clamoring of, it looks, sounds like sticks being bun bunched together in a bag, trying, moving from below. That's all right. So Bola Fruta, you're up first. I'm attacking the next skeleton. Go for it. Keep on trucking. <laughs> All right, rolling to hit. Uh, and that is a 17, so we hit. And that is 14 points of damage. Uh, it is destroyed. And then we swing for the last. There's one more left, right? There's one more left, uh, and that one uh, yes. had been tagged by Nemo. I just, I just natural twentyed it, so it's destroyed as well. Yeah, I figured I don't need to. Cool. Go there. <laughs> so, right. uh, so there's no more action on the landing. You have about a round before the first of the skeletons from the floor below make it onto the land. Uh, it's and oh, it would be a um, that ladder you talked about or another path. B one and Z would be the the two with the action. Okay, steps. I'm going to move forward to toward the edge so I can see down to the bottom, and at the base of the ladder, I'm going to cast, or actually at the base of the ladder, but ten feet out, so that it gets the ladder and a full twenty foot circle. I'm going to cast shatter, um, and a booming noise will initiate from the point at the center of the circle and do a ten foot radius sphere. And everything inside that sphere needs to make a con save, DC 16, uh, and take uh, 3d8 thunder damage. And that includes uh, non-magical objects take damage and inorganics, stone, crystal, uh, metal, uh, roll at disadvantage. How, tell me the... 10-foot sphere. Radi uh, the radius, radius is 10 foot. So a, a total of a 20-foot circle... From the center point, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to roll those D8s mm -hmm. just a second here. Yep, roll the D8s. Uh, eight and three is 11, and five is 16. Or half of that on a save. So everything inside that sphere takes 16 damage. Okay. Uh, All right. So as you look below, there's about half a dozen skeletons that were moving quickly into that area and some that had begun to climb the ladder. They have, um, most of them appear to have shattered. Um, and you also, because you went into some of the room, you saw a, there's at least one trestle table with plates and stuff on it. That all shatters as well. There's a couple of skeletal dogs. They That's shatter, or doggies. <laughs> um, outside of that, you had a couple that appear to become... Um, damaged, significantly damaged by the spell, but are still standing and they are stumbling their way to the ladder. Outside the spell, there's still about a dozen skeletons that are still making their way forward towards this, towards that um, okay. ladder. Um, Zeal checks so, the ladder. Is see? it, is it like on, is it like 
just set on there or is it on like hinges or is it connected to the it mounted, mounted to, to the, the wall, wall. Uh, Z's gonna try and rip it like push it off from the wall rip it from the wall and just topple it over just to be safe sure. just a femur bone. Uh, make a yeah. strength okay. check for me mm -hmm. strength athletic, athletic? okay <clears throat> he's got yeah I'd let you All use right. that Way to flex, Z bot. Uh, that is flex. 17 plus 7, 24. So, Woo. What, Woo. I'm, what I'm going to uh, say is, as you're trying to strain to pull them both, what you find is you can get one of the, the sides of the ladder, you clearly begin to feel come loose from its mooring, mm -hmm. and you're able to pull it out and throw it down towards the, the skeletons. The couple that were on the ladder, they tumble off. Uh, as the piece lays, there's still a post laying up, but it's clearly broken and it's not impossible to climb, but very, very difficult compared to the ladder that would have been there before. Okay. So you have a, a breathing space uh, that, Shaughnessy, what is your action this round? Uh, kind of uh, to take a step back from, from the gallery and uh, like a disengage. Okay. And uh, just kind of stand at the ready and just like, should we take our leave here? I don't think we want to go into this foray itself. I say we throw know. torches down inside. Oh, you want me to light it on fire? You know me. Ah, damn it. Wrong character. Wrong character. Man. <laughs> <laughs> As always, I stand prepared to light it up. Hey, we did say this party was lit. So, okay. firebolt. Light that bonfire. Whatever you guys want. It is a stone keep. You probably oh, have I a short period of time. Fairly safe. Right. Now, Z, make a perception check for me, Z. Okay. Now that you're now, but um, nine. Okay. Um, you you feel as though your your sense of undead did not encompass this room, but you don't know why. When you cast your spell before, that you don't feel like it covered okay. this room, but you you can't you can't oh. figure out why. Hmm. Flesh bags. My divine sense did not sense the undead in this room. These could actually be of a similar make to myself, such as automatons or creatures of different origin. Made to look like skeletons? Huh. Okay. Uh, of course. They could be animated, I believe is the word you use. Animate object. That would be a lot of spell use. Uh, well, over time, yeah. <laughs> many objects could be animated if the current owners are not who they say they are. Well, um, so what should our course of action be? Uh, I'm enjoying the shooting gallery. So, He'll look around. Is there any other direction yeah. for us to go other than the downstairs? There's right and left. You got a, the, the curtain's just one side of this room. You have a corridor that we goes off. Go the, the, it was a, it's a tower, so it's around. We didn't go around the sides. Well, let's check the There's other still rooms, I believe. We'll go we'll go to the left. Okay, to the left it is. Okay, as soon as there's a skeleton on the ladder, I'm gonna hit it with a ray of frost. What ladder? Hey, we tore the ladder. Point, go ahead and roll your uh, ray of frost and I'll 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 assume that you're doing that as they begin walking away from you. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, to the left? Yes. That's okay. a dirty twenty. And you hit, yeah. And let me roll the damage wherever the hell my eight-sided die went. Oh, there it is. Uh, six points of frost damage, and its movement is reduced to ten. Okay. Hold on. And then I'll roll out. All right. Um, so I heard Z and Shaughnessy and Bola Fruta, you will quickly, again, you go around the side of the, the down the corridor, and you see a door 
um, on your left. Uh, since you're moving around towards the left, this means it's a door that's going to the outside of the central uh, of the keep. Uh, you surmise it's going into one of the three towers on the outside. I'm going to go up and kick the door open. All right, you kick the door open. Are you still holding Munchkin that axe? shit? Damn right, I'm holding my axe. All right. <laughs> you kick the door open. You look in, you see a row of narrow wooden benches that all face towards the opposite end of the room. At the opposite end of the room, you see a small altar uh, with a sarcophagus in front of it, a small sarcophagus, a very small. Uh, and you notice that the windows on this floor are actual windows and highly decorative on the far end, um, on the same side as the altar, you would say it's probably some uh, something of a religious nature, even though you yourself are not particularly religious, um, you can easily surmise this may be a chapel. As you look along the lengths, you see, again, little plaques in different places uh, where inscriptions are written, and you can surmise that that may be some memorial to various members of the tower's owners. I'm going to relay it back to uh, cohorts behind me. Chapel, sarcophagus, moving in. <laughs> uh, I will, yeah, Z will step in with them and maybe try to discern who this god is that they're worshiping. Not my god. Uh, it, roll hey guys, a, what's up? <laughs> roll a check for me, Z. Okay. Uh, 15? Um, you don't recognize the name, but you definitely get the sense that whoever the the chapel was originally dedicated to was clearly lawful, um, was not evil, does not appear to be evil, even if the name isn't something you're familiar with, or the, the more esoteric aspects of this particular religion aren't something that you have, have received in your travels or programming. Okay. Ah, this chapel seems to be aligned to a lawful or positive god. Ah, I thought it spelled funny. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, uh, that's, that's a, a good thing on the surface. Um, you said, uh, looking into the room, one of the sarcophagi is a, uh, small sarcophagus. Uh, it is, uh, it has a relief on the top in the shape of, of a human male appears to be human male. Um, I human you look at the sarcophagus, it's not halfling. It just looks like it's a small sarcophagus sarcophagus it probably um did not house a body in its resting state it probably is just housing bones is what mm. you'd surmise it's, it's okay. Better check make sure Better they're like not like a reliquary more like a reliquary than an actual sar sarcophagus okay I'm, I'm gonna check to make sure the bones aren't trying to kill us from behind and maybe whatever else i can find i'm gonna just switch it up a little bit and if ask bowl of fruit to, to hold on for a minute and then I'll cast light on his horn. My horn? My, my nubbins? Yeah, yeah, he's got glow in the dark. One, one of your nubbins is now a light producing source. You can get rid of that lantern so both your hands are free to double handed wield. <laughs> Thanks. Nice. I'm a freaking glowing mm -hmm. target. Yeah, exactly. Now you're I freaking maneuver. You're a tracer <laughs> now. Shield. Meat shield should have had that put on his nose or something. Yeah. That's, you know, the boring. Bull, bull, yeah, the bull bull ring. Ring. Bull ring. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to pass off the lamp now that I don't need it. So somebody else. I All got right, tired here. of boring lights. Here, Nemo. Yeah, are, are you actually... You said you're inspecting it. I was opening the lid. Oh, right, you open the lid. Uh, inside are, are bones. Essentially. Gonna shift them around. Make uh, sure they're yeah. Um, oh, wow, you're looking you're for shiny bones around. You do actually find um, a scroll case inside the this uh, the reliquary amidst the bones. Oh, you probably shouldn't touch that. It's too late because he's pulling for it. About yeah, thing. Yeah, it's too late. He already oh, has. That, that's what yeah. I'm going to say as he pulls it out in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. As, as soon as I opened that thing, it was too yeah. late. 
I, I assume both for it's knowing him as well as we do. Pulled it open, dumped it out the contest. Hey, look at this! <laughs> uh, it, does, it doesn't take a genius level to realize that uh, this, the the in contents of the scroll case are actually the architectural plans of the tower, believe it or not. Hey, um, see? A closer inspection by anyone would have said on the plaque on this reliquary is actually... Um, it's labeled as the architect of the tower. Here rests the architect of the tower, Clinton Streeter. And it, I knew whoever I buried them actually put in there the architectural plan. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, does the name sound familiar? Clayton Sure does. Streeter? Okay. Did this architect design a special tower in New York City that uh, is a calling card to other realms? No, you're good. I was about you're to good. say you're that. <laughs> the deity so is got... that name Zul by any Ooh. chance. What? <laughs> that was a lawful... Zul. No, it's a lawful deity. Z's already confirmed that. Yeah. I Z has come to Yeah. So uh, you, you now have the architectural plans for the, the tower. Okay. Um, if someone studies those, I don't know who is looking at them, or if you're looking at them, bowl fruit is just as likely to use them as toilet paper. <laughs> so. Well, but we can use his light to inspect them. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll look at the- I'll hand them off. Somebody else wants to- uh... For the next hour. Yeah, uh, if uh, Z and Nimoy and I will- Lay out the plans and take a look at and see. Lay them out on the altar. Yep. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I was trying to see if I could find the page here. I'm going to stand on the back side of the altar and lean over, look at the plans. And I don't know how well that'll appear, oh. but no. the, the plans lay out yeah. the five levels of the tower. Okay. I mean, you can see it goes, there's a cellar, um, a cellar to the tower, there's the parapet, mm -hmm. and then the three living levels are all laid out in the document. Um, you can see clearly marked on the document is the chapel. It was the original purpose of the room you were in was the chapel. You also see within uh, the, the plans itself, you see the kitchen clearly labeled. You see the garrison label, uh, which would have been the barracks you started out in. You realize very quickly that the third tower, the one you've never passed, uh, you've always sort of circled back and forth on the two levels between the two towers, is the stairs tower. Quite literally, the main stairs of the facility the spiral staircase that goes up to each floor is the tower you haven't seen. It's uh, the next one as you pass along the left. Um, you can see the positioning of uh, bedrooms on the next floor. One floor above are clearly the Lord and Ladies chambers of uh, the tower. And then, of course, the parapet walk at the very top. The gatekeeper and the key master's room? Oh, well, you have to see if that's on the parapet, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> where do they stare? Where do they stare? Where do they stare? Now, Fellows, I have a, I have a, I have a thought. It appears that these may not be the rightful owners of this tower, and therefore, by the laws of conquest, if we were to, say, remove them from their ownership of this tower, it would become ours. Um, I have no use for a tower. It's a good <laughs> place to shelter meat bags. Who is studying the the tower blueprints? Everybody. Uh, Okay. Everybody make an intelligence arcana check for me. Okay. okay. I can do that. Uh, that's 26. Uh, uh, Hold on. I got to get my two cents. Let's that's uh, three. <laughs> 21. And I, I'm going well, to, it's made of paper. Shh. I'm going to mark my territory on this altar. <laughs> oh. Excellent. Okay. Um, for the folks who rolled well, <laughs> you do see on the blueprints that uh, it appears there is a hidden ladder that enters from the back of the chapel behind the altar is, uh, should be a, a secret ladder that goes up okay. to the next floor. And perhaps up to the floor after that, it's not clear from the the doctor. Okay, I explained no, that to the ones that didn't roll high that there is perhaps a hidden ladder towards the back of the chapel. So. Oh, okay. 
Because I think I'm the only one that matches that. Click. Oh. oh I, got a, I got a 10. That's I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> I, uh, well, I, I'm not casting stones. No, I, no, okay. No. But you uh, know it was more so, than bullet paper, though. Yeah. <laughs> paper. Nice. I was asking you to use a little wipe my butt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Z will walk over to it and uh, open it and uh, start making his way up. He just yeah. doesn't. He he doesn't even say. He just goes because it's oh, it's it's up, it's up. And secret towers. Yeah. Secret towers mean secret things. Up. More understanding of human. More understanding of humans and <laughs> other flesh creatures. Now I do need as you go and you release the secret panel um, for the meat bags in the room. Uh, if you could make a, a DC eighteen uh, DC dexterity check for me. Please. Just a check. Right? Next check. Save. 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 Let's call it a save. Let's okay. call it what it is. We call it what it is. All right. Eleven. Uh, deck save. Deck save. I'm not at all proficient then. Uh, Twenty-one. <laughs> the halfling dances around uh, with the save. The bull 17. is in a china shop, and Nimoy, the portal <laughs> things okay. <laughs> as soon as they all leave, my plan was to kick the alder over anyway. So, so uh, bowl of fruta. What is what is actually your alignment? I am chaotic neutral. Okay, um, but this is not my god. So this is well, it, this, no. It's it's not a question of god. Um, so for bowl of fruta, none of the rest of you notice anything different. But bowl of fruta, as he's standing there. You see a weird look come over this bull's face, if that's possible for a bull. There's so much <laughs> as a creature. Um, but bull fruit, you see a shadowy apparition sort of hovering just out of your sight, and it seems to be talking to you. But back to Z. Z, the, the door, the panel is opened up. Um, there, it's very dark inside there, but there's an inset into the stonework is are, are multiple iron rungs. Um, they start at, the, at this floor and they go up into a dark, narrow chimney, you assume to the next floor, but you cannot see it from here. Okay. Z will start making his way up. Okay. Uh, is anyone else going before I deal with Z or Bowl of Fruit though? Before you deal with them. Okay. <laughs> nice. Not ominous at all, Jason. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not necessarily ominous. They're just turn a phrase. Maybe, maybe I'll go next and tell uh, I'll, I'll John be part, and I'll oh, be, there's a call for him. I'll, I'll be part of Attack Force Z. And follow <laughs> <on. laughs> okay. Attack Force Z. And Bola, are more... you coming? We're going up the ladder. Shadow. Shadow's weird talking to me do, do do we hear him say that <laughs> not to cast I, light on him anymore i think oh. nimoy nimoy heard it i don't know that shaughnessy or z would have heard heard the comment Shadow, right what do you mean shadows i don't know thank floating what are they saying i don't know i can't understand i don't think i can understand can i you you don't understand. No, it it doesn't. You can't hear anything. There's no audio. It's just I see him talking. You see him talking, gesturing wildly, uh, maybe angrily. Uh, it's very amorphous, but it generally looks like a humanoid shape, wearing a cowl. Um, the face is in shadows, but you can see the mouth moving frantically. It's like it's anger gesturing and it's hovering right in your face it's like it's like the relative who gets way too close to talk to you at thanksgiving and so they're like right here trying to talk to you gotcha. um, no sense of somebody present only this apparition that you can see and this cold sense uh as it's by you okay i want to swat away get it right get it right okay so z at the top of the ladder you you get to a point and you you um you don't see light or anything, but just the illumination of uh, from the lighting that you guys are dealing with already. I'm assuming you're still carrying lanterns, uh, or have bowl of fruits is not in the hallway in the chimney lantern. with you. You can see an outline of a door panel, a narrow panel. You assume that is at least a floor up. You feel like you've gone maybe 15, 20 feet up, which would put you clearly on the next yeah. floor. Uh, there seems to be a panel, but the the ladder keeps going okay. up as well. Now, uh, Z, you are, are, 
again, for Warforce, I apologize. Are you considered otherwise humanoid um, or automaton? Uh, they're, I think or, they're considered any... humanoid. They just have kind of more like a okay. robot. They have more like, yeah, like kind of like a, okay. a automaton type qualities to them, but they have, um, yeah, they're, they're human, considered a humanoid. So go ahead and make a uh, wisdom saving throw for me. Thirteen. Okay, um, you for a moment you feel like you're you're hearing someone talking or whispering to you while you're in the tunnel, mm -hmm. but then it goes away. Hmm. Query, Shaughnessy, did you hear voices? Uh, <laughs> does Shaughnessy hear voices, uh, Jason? <laughs> not, not at the moment. No. Not at the moment. Okay. Uh, no, I do not. I do not hear voices. Why? You hear voices? or Momentarily, voices or auditory noises were being perceived. Then they had disappeared, as though it was attempting to invade my auditory senses. Hmm. Uh, was it speech, or was it just a sensation, like a like a noise, like vibration, or something like that? Or it was the cusp of speech, as though someone were saying a word, and. It was ended before it began. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's not weird at all. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I say we exercise caution. So, <laughs> uh, so Z, uh, you're standing on mm -hmm. the ladder, right opposite. If you use the panel that you can open, or you can keep going up. What are Z's you going to keep do? going up? Okay. So Z, you keep climbing to the top. Eventually, you come to a, a panel above your head, so clearly mm -hmm. a trap door. And it takes a little bit of effort, uh, almost to the point of, of thinking that um, it, you know, it hasn't been opened in a long time and maybe it's rusted shut. Uh, but eventually, you do force it open. Um, you're certainly strong enough to do that. And when you open it up, there is light, faint light, coming from that next level. Mm. Okay. Bill, step through, yeah. So you're going to step, you're going to climb on yep, up. Sean and will follow through. Yeah. Okay. And what was your role uh, on your wisdom 13. save last time? Okay. So as you walk through, you hear someone clearly talking mm -hmm. to you. And as you step into this, this room, you feel almost claustrophobic. It's such a tight fit as you enter up and you think just from what the how far you came up you are on the very last floor very top floor of the entire tower and as you step up it looks like a bedroom it's very well there are cushions everywhere um, books everywhere as well at least this area where you're at as you step forward there's light at the other end this would be the direction that would put you towards the outside okay. tower uh, the tower from below that you're at, you would be walking towards that tower because you're climbing up the in inner wall. Um, you feel like that you can go deeper in towards the middle of the building. That's where the plush cushions, the bedroom-like mm -hmm. feel is. As you go towards the tower side, it becomes more and more um, laboratory-like. Okay. Um, you see books, you see uh, spell components on the walls, you see all sorts of uh, medicinal type okay. things as you walk that direction. And at the very far end, leaning out over the tower window, you see the shape of a young willowy mm -hmm. girl, her long hair hanging out the tower window. Uh, and you see it also spread throughout the room as well, extensively long hair. As you move forward, it is her voice you are hearing and she's telling you her tragic tale of how she was imprisoned in the tower and how the evil valet has kept her locked here for years and years and years. Now, Shaughnessy, roll a wisdom save. Okay. 
because you're right behind Z right. coming up this ladder. And I'm assuming you didn't stop at the other floor. No, no, I did not. So uh, 10. <laughs> Shaughnessy, you all but love this girl as you step out. Uh, regardless of your, of your orientation as a halfling champion or whether <laughs> you feel about tall girls or small wave girls or girls without big feet, this girl, you are enchanted by this tale, and you feel overwhelming sympathy for her. Even though she has no hair on her feet whatsoever? No hair on her feet whatsoever, and she's, he's still in, completely enthralled by this tale, and you have no ability to resist the compulsion to move towards her as she continues to tell it. So let's bounce back to Nimoy. Okay. Nimoy, where are you in this process? Are you stopping at the lower level or are you working your way up to the top? Well, I had stopped at the lower level to try and find out if Bula was going to come with me and the rest of us and take up the rear and be a meat shield between me and whatever's behind me. <laughs> and, we don't, and we're not sure where he's at. Where, where Bula's at? Yeah, where Bula's at, other than the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hear him <laughs> pissing on something, so I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, it may be a cat. We're not sure. Um, Z, just as you're looking in, in the room for you and Shaughnessy, the girl, mm. she still really hasn't looked at you yet. She's still, but you hear the recitation just keeps going on and on about an unfaithful lover and about the tragedy of the, the valet and his sister who have kept him here and her wicked father. Uh, all this just keeps repeating like on a loop. Bola Fruta, um, Shaughnessy. Meat Shield, are you coming? Or at the top of the tower, Nimoy is at the next level. Um, Shaughnessy and Z are at the top of the tower. You're coming up from the bottom. What are you doing? Well, I'm leaving the babbling whatever behind me that I can't understand anyways. And oh, no. It's following you up the ladder. <laughs> oh, good. Bring it with you. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to crop dust and climb up the ladder behind everybody else. <laughs> All right, Nimoy, how about you? Uh, I, so I don't see, when I look back to make sure he's coming, I don't see any shadows around him or anything like that? You don't. All right, no. but then I'm just going to continue to climb up and find out where the other guys went. This is my curse for peeing on assuming that. Assuming Bulla is following behind me. Yeah, you see the light from his horn glowing yeah. coming up the yeah. tower. All right, as you I'll go move, ahead. move past that third level towards the roof of the tower, Make a DC wisdom save. Uh, oh, uh, ba, 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 ba. oh, I'm proficient in that. That's plus four. That's 22. Okay. You hear some faint uh, talking or whispering coming from the, the area above, but it doesn't, you don't seem to have any effect on you. So you climb and pass through. Bola Fruta, are you stopping at the third level or are you following Nimoy up and out? I was following everybody up and out. I mean, yeah, I'm not, like I'm not going to look, but. DC wisdom. Yep. Bumble. You hear this beautiful voice coming from above this angel. And she is telling you this horrific tale of being trapped in this tower for ages by her horrible, wicked father and the valet and his sister keeping her here for these years upon years upon years and how she's just been waiting for a hero to set her free. I'm your hero. So, I can Nimoy, your as you step baby. out, uh, of, I assume you go out of the trap door following. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. so you see the same thing. If you look back towards the inner part of the tower, you see comfortable living space, old, faded, clearly worn. If you look outwards mm -hmm. towards outside this would make the tower, a nice study. Yeah, you see a more a laboratory, a study, you know, several grimoires, uh, several components for spell component pieces etc and at the far end the young waif of a girl um watching the storm outside her tail. her long hair hanging out the window but also reaching outwards throughout the room so uh, the I, hair goes out the i window. see this girl does she look the Hair goes out the window does she look i mean she's got all this hair obviously i want you to roll uh yeah. you are a hex blood fae right Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, so let's have you ro let roll with. I'm heir to a hag coven, I am. <laughs> so I want you to roll with advantage on an arcana check. Oh, I. 
<laughs> uh, with advantage, that's going to be a 27 with a natural 20. Um, so you feel a camaraderie <laughs> with this person. Uh, oh. You see a sense of, of uh, connection to this girl who's telling her tale out the window. Um, just the same girl I'm like just... You're in love. You have stumbled up, and now you see Shaughnessy and Z standing before her, rapidly listening to her tale, and you come running up and fall on your knees in front of her. Yes, exactly. <laughs> now she begins to tell you, she says, You are my champion. She's looking at all three of you. You are my champions. I need you to find the coin and free me. I will tear this building down, my lady. Mary. I didn't what like is your the name. Ballet. You're asking the 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 yeah the wave girl. Yeah. Her, her name is Orchid. Oh, Query, balls. Orchid. Would it not be easier to just cut your hair and release you from it? Uh, make an insight check. Everybody okay. who's, who's looking. Disadvantage for the three enthralled people. Oh, okay. So what am oh, what are we rolling? Insight. Wisdom check. Insight. Okay. Yeah. Insight wisdom check. Uh yeah, that's <laughs> not that great. Uh 14. Uh let's see. So I rolled a 19 and a 20. So <laughs> 21. <laughs> okay. Uh I rolled an 18 and a 13, adding my modifier. Yeah. Uh that'll be 16. Okay. So, so I rolled an 18 and a six. <laughs> And Nimoy, what was yours again? Oh, I, I just rolled it straight. I've got 14. Uh, was I supposed to roll advantage? Oh, no, no you, they you rolled disadvantage. Five. You're yeah. a disadvantage for the three that are enthralled. Right, 14 uh, straight for me. Okay. Uh, with no, you don't have a, a bonus on the... That That's that's with my two bonus. Oh, okay. I rolled a 12. Uh, so the even though you're enthralled, Z, you very, very clearly pick up on it. Shaughnessy, you get the sense that she was uncomfortable by the the suggestion of cutting her hair. Z, you get the sense both, both that she was not only um, horrified at the thought of cutting her hair, she was angry that you suggested it. I, I would know that that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> so it's, she said no. It makes, it makes zero sense to him why it wouldn't, why, why <laughs> that would that just that's just completely illogical from his so standpoint. She is she is back to insisting, oh my champions, I need you to find the coin. It is somewhere in the tower and bring it to me. It okay. Me in the tower. That seems Suckers. illogical. As well as a waste of effort and time. Shaughnessy, were you not recently given shears? We I could was. Cut her, or I could use my sword and we could cut you free. It would make our all of this quite easy, and you would be oh, able to oh, uh, I gotta gotta also kill coin. her. I gotta find a coin. I, as Z, I, it's perfect. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as as you are suggesting that she is becoming more and more agitated by the suggestion, but um, and she becomes insistent on finding the coin. Now she's turned away from the window, and she's looking oh. at you. Directly. I have to tell you, fellows, she's not what she appears to be. She's a goddess. Of course Perhaps. Not. Or she has an be. unnecessary amount of human hair connected to various areas of her tower, as okay. well as outside it of the tower. It may only appear to be hair, Z. <laughs> then now, would it not be easier to cut it free? Or, at the very least, if that would not work, Burning it would be more apt. Again, this might no. kill her. No, she, we've got to find a coin. What's wrong with you people? She wants a coin! There's enchantments she, at play here. It's not merely physical manifestations. She definitely looks at Bola Fruta, who's clearly enthralled by her, and pleads with her champion not to let them cut her hair and to go find the coin. I will find your coin! Don't touch her. I'm um, off. I'm going to, as a bonus action, I'm going to reach into my mouth and pluck a tooth from the back of my mouth. And then I'm going to hand it to Z. Okay. 
I can now communicate with him um, within 10 miles psychically. Do uh, turtles and I'm going have to say, <laughs> Yes, they do, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Um, but I'm going to say to him, without anybody else being able to hear, it may or may not be a good idea to kill her. I'm not sure yet. She's not a human. Not by any means. Of course not. Her humanity I'm not even would sure she's on. a flesh bag. With hair of that length, all her nutrients would go through her hair, which would in turn cause subsequent death. I'm not or, certain it's hair. Um, Z will cast Divine Sense for any uh, Celestial Fiend or Undead to see That's if she's either of idea. those three. No, not Celestial, not Fiend, not Un... Nope. Uh, the, your Undead spell still resonates a little bit downstairs because you remember you have the Ogre uh -huh. downstairs. Um, but And, and the general pervasive, pervasive sense of Undead circling the tower hmm. hallways. All right. But nothing new. Okay. Um, so... Since, I think it's time we get her attention. So since he can do that, he will channel divinity um, into his power called Abjure the Extra Planar. You can use your channel divinity to cast, uh, castigate unworldly beings. As an action, you present your holy symbol, which is just him, and each aberration, celestial, elemental, or fey, fey or fiend within 30 feet of you that can hear you must make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, ouch. Uh, I, I was about to say, bye, Nimoy. <laughs> no, nope, it's all good. <laughs> On a failed save, the creature is turned for one minute or until it takes damage. What's and your DC? Of, uh, DC 13. I easily I, beat your DC. I, yeah. Am I out of the room yet before this happens? Because that was I think you took, a, you took a swan dive down the, the hole, uh, didn't you? <laughs> Looking well, for the coin. I whatever. I was going to the nearest exit to go find a freaking coin. As that was down the hole. I was down the hole. Then that's what I was doing. He is so, yeah. he is so confused. Like this is not this is not normal but creature behavior. Was, no, it's not. And, so I'm you say why you're not doing what she wants you to do? And what's the the uh, DC on your, your spell? Your um, it's just a DC thirteen uh, wisdom saving throw. Pretty much, if she's any of those creatures. Which she is like to. everything in the monster manual, right? Yeah, pretty much anything that's not anything that's not pretty much just like a baseline. Monster. It doesn't do beasts or monsters. Yeah, it or is monstrosities. Aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, or fiend. So pretty much I, any creature that could be banished from this plane. So the minute you cast your spell, yeah, uh, I go ow. Power, um, you see that the um, the girl. Mm -hmm. has the exact same reaction as Nimoy and turns away from you in obvious pain. Oh, okay. Z will then uh, continue to ask, Creature, please state your true origins and or intent so that I may either Get her, a, Z. eliminate you from this plane of existence as you are not meant to be here, or B, leave you here as this is your place of prison <laughs> and or burden punishment. Um, so she she whimpers uh, and the um, surprise the valet didn't hear that first boom. Yeah. So the, <laughs> depending on where the valet is, um, you just she, got a lot of things to check first. She uh, as she's turned away, she's whimpering and she's telling you again her tale. And she you hear her mumble the name Francis Orchid Bronwood. Uh, and Francis was the name on the uh, painting below. Right. The girl, the, the yeah, the girl, picture of the girl that was not okay. faced. Okay. Balls. Query, creature, please state your true nature, no longer needing intent, as I have heard that multiple times. Please state your true nature. Yeah. How long does your, uh, your um, spell last? Uh, one minute or until it takes damage. Pretty much he's just going to, like, he's, he's on auto repeat if she doesn't answer his questions. <laughs> like, he's, he's sounding like United States Senator. He's a, if they're not he, answering he's questions. A, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time, tell me my answer. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> I would say, why don't you make an intimidation check? Oh, I'm in. Given that you're causing her discomfort and pain. He does do intimidation. Okay. Oops, that's a four. Natural 20, plus five, 25. So 
you, as you look uh -huh. uh, now, again, Shaughnessy, all of a sudden you feel a change come over you. You've been enthralled by her. You've listened to her tale. Uh -huh. Um, but all of a sudden, under the barrage of questioning from Z, this constant, repetitive, boom, answer the question, answer the question, answer the question. All of a sudden, you see her, her back stiffen, and this image of this young girl begins to harden. Sharper edges to her features and her face, and her gown begins to turn, and you realize the illusion is dropping from her, and now she's dressed much more severely in old faded clothing and her luxurious blonde hair that was streaming out from her begins to lose its color, turn ash gray, become dry and brittle, but almost like a spider web, it streaks off into every aspect of the tower, down the tunnel into everything um, and out the window. And as she turns around to you, you see the faint glow of her eyes. Uh, you see the sharp, harsh features and Nimoy clearly recognizes what she is as she turns around or suspects some variation of what she is, if not one that he is specifically familiar with. And she said, she looks at Z and says, you want to know what I am creature? And, and you see the very long claws that she has in her hand in the moonlight um, glint. And she says, I am your doom. Get her, Z. <laughs> Are you a god? <laughs> yes. Uh, as he looks at me, he hears that. And he goes, I am not a creature. I am Zucral Davian-5739. Oh, it is an Z. unfortunate moment to make your acquaintance. Okay. And he, he unsheaths them all. <laughs> so let's roll initiative and we'll go ahead and get Bola Fruta, who Bola Fruta is scrambling down the ladder by this time. He's at the bottom of the ladder. He's back out in the salon. He's running around. <laughs> going, Where's, Where's the coin? Where's the coin? I need the coin. I figured uh, I'm just tearing the place. Try not to destroy the laboratory. I want to use it. So as Bola Fruta is running around, Bola Fruta, you run into the ballet. Okay, I want to grab him. She wants her coin. Where's her coin, little man? <laughs> and the valet is really, really upset that you're asking about a coin. He's horrified. And he says, what do you know? What do you know? She wants the coin. Now, either be the spit and be placed on a fire or give me the coin. I need the coin. I need the coin. I need the coin. I need the coin. You'll never have the coin. Give me the coin. <laughs> give me the coin. <laughs> So let's skip back up top, uh, assuming Bowl of Fruits is, ends up killing the poor valet. We'll come oh. back to that in a minute. But let's see where we're at here. Okay. So, initiative. All right. 21. Blackjack. Yeah, Blackjack. Uh, that is 17 for uh, Shaughnessy. Stay. Uh, <laughs> 13 for Z. Z is 13. Bola, did you say 17 too? No, I didn't roll at all. Roll, go ahead and roll. I can keep you in the loop. Oops, wrong one. Uh, there it is. Let's see. Oh, wow. Look at that. Big 10. Big numbers. Big numbers. You know what? You're still better than me. And I, I got to use the computer program because my wife packed away all my dice because we're moving. <laughs> I have nothing. All right. So, uh, Nemo, you're first. Uh, well, first of all, um, bonus action hex. I'm going to do that to her because I like that idea really good. It's not going to do anything to her right now, but when I hit her in a second, it will. And that then I'm way. going to um, just kind of step forward and put my hands out like this and hit her with burning hands. Okay. So, deck save, please. How's a little fire, Scarecrow? Well, guess what? I've got murder hobo dice, too. <laughs> um, I didn't fumble, but I rolled just about as low as I possibly could. <laughs> uh, then she's going to take uh, 17 fire Ooh. damage, and anything flammable uh, around her is going to catch on fire. 
Uh, and did you do burning hands? The 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 uh, spell oh. that like a cone shape. That the goes fifteen out? foot cone. Yep. Okay. Now she was in front of the window, and you guys are are sort of in front of her. So that's going to hit everything that's in her laboratory space, essentially, right? Oh yeah. Okay. There I told them lab. not to blow it up. I told them I wanted to use it. Well, you you're using it. That is true. All, All right. That's why I used burning hands. All right. Uh, so that's uh, okay. Let me let's, let's just roll for explosions. Oh, <laughs> please do. Is there a <laughs> dex checks, please? So, so for the three that are still in the room, everybody make a dex check, including the hag at disadvantage. Okay. I am not hag, an extra. Hag made her dex check. <laughs> okay. The other uh, hag made her dex check. 16 for Shaughnessy. You made yours. Uh, that was a 14. 19. Uh, yeah, I, I think everybody made their dex check, so half damage, oh, uh, unless somebody has evasion or something else, right? Yeah. Uh, can I do a perception check? Uh, sure. For the hair. Do I notice is the hair damaged or is it relatively undamaged? Oh, man. As that hair goes, does the whole building collapse? Thought just hit my Hold mind. on, I'm still wrong. Uh, so everybody takes 14 damage from the explosions. Oh, Jesus. that's fun. Wow, that was half damage. <sighs> a good thing. Um, so you you do not see the hair burning. Okay, in fact, it's the only thing in this room right now not burning. <laughs> that's what uh, I figured. The fire. Uh, you can quickly surmise that these old plush fabrics in this room, the silks, the velvets, they burn quickly and easily. And so the fire's beginning to race along the walls, but the hair itself is not burning. Okay. All, All right. right. So that was Nimoy. Great start there. Uh, how about Shaughnessy with 17? 17. My, uh, my business card does say I wreck shit. <laughs> you literally <laughs> did. <laughs> It was a, no, it, it was great. Uh, yeah, Shaughnessy, uh, noticing this, uh, is her gaze fixed upon all of us or just one in particular, like Nimoy, since she he just... definitely has a hard-on for Z right now because he has stopped her plans. I questioned her life choices. Okay. <laughs> Z is going to try to try to uh, stealth out of eyeshade uh, eyesight. Uh, eyesight of her. Eyesight is about right at the moment. It's about right at this point. It's a shit. Me or Sean? Um, so I'm going to try to stealth, uh, a, you know, just make my way somehow stealthily towards the hair. Towards the hair. It's easy to find the hair. Now that the illusion has dropped, it's everywhere. Oh, okay. It is everywhere. Okay. It's everywhere. All right, I'm going to get to the closest po point of the hair and I'm going to pull out the shears. Okay. Start cutting. <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead and roll an attack at advantage. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, at advantage. Uh, any modifiers since I'm not attacking with any of my regular weapons? No, your normal, uh, uh, you, you are a champion, right? So you yeah. have proficiency with any weapon? Yeah, I do. I yeah, do. you you definitely so plus seven. So eighteen yeah. plus seven. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you you hit. Okay, so I I cut. <laughs> okay, uh, so here's what you notice as you begin to cut. There's some resistance before you actually come to the hair. You feel the shears themselves. It's like they bite down on something around the hair, and as this resistance grows, you see almost a, a blue nimbus as the shears slowly work their way through the, the, the uh, hawk of hair that you've got a hold of. And eventually there's a snap, an audible snap as something gives and the shears go clean through the hair. And there's a recoil for the hair that's still connected to the hag's head. It zips back <laughs> and a, the hair that was going out from that that you had a hold of Mm -hmm. You feel a slight rumbling and shake as the hair that's still in your hand that you cut begins to crumble to dust. Oh, okay. 
All right. So, yeah, I'm just, so I, you know, I try to get uh, Z's attention. It's just like, you know, I'm playing charades. Hopefully he gets the cryptic thing about it. You distract. I'm going to cut. <laughs> uh, we'll let Z make an insight check. See if you, uh, or perception, whichever is better. See if you pick up on what uh, Shaughnessy is sending. Okay, I'll, I'll perception. Okay, my the thing. Nineteen. Yeah, I think you picked up. He, okay. He definitely is convinced, can, trying to convince you to let him cut hair while you keep her distracted. All so, right. so that's that's my action. That this round is to keep cutting. Okay, and then we'll move on to that's Nimoy. Trying to see Z. You're thirteen. All right, Z will uh, walk up to the creature and he will poke her in the eye. He will go to smite her with his maul while at the same time asking her, Query, creature, state your true nomenclature. Uh, make your roll. Uh, that's your a gritted, 20... sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. you, you hear her threaten you and say, You want to know my name, creature? I'm Wicked Orchid. I'm your death. Uh, and that's a 25 that's to hit. Um, with, so I will 2d6. Nice. Uh, and she takes 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Um, and after he hits her, he will, uh, uh, he will, um, uh, after he hits her, he'll just pummel her and go, appreciated. Please state powers and abilities as he, as he preps to hit her again. So, yeah, she pulls out a rap sheet that lists off all of her basic statistics. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank she you. Hands it to, no, she doesn't. Uh, <laughs> Z stops combat, walks away, reads it. Sorry. <laughs> comes back. <laughs> nice. nice. All right. Uh, Bola Fruta, as this combat gets underway, um, your, the charm that you've been under unravels. And you're sitting there shaking the valet, and all of a sudden you go, "Why am I shaking the valet?" The hell are you doing? Conversation up above. I recall the conversation up above. You recall the conversation up above. You remember there's a girl up in the tower. You just can't figure out why you were so intent on finding this coin for because you know you're just not a giving person. All right, I'm going to throw the valet. Go back up the hole. <laughs> uh, yeah, the valet. The valet. Um, as you <laughs> move back towards the hole, you're walking out. You feel a shudder in the entire structure of the tower, and you hear the valet scream and panic. Uh, but you begin making your way up to the top of the tower. So the hag is going to take her turn, and so you feel. I'm going to start with Shaughnessy, and the hag is going to take two actions. One is a a, a, a series of grapple attacks with the hair, and the okay. other is a claw attack against Z. So I'm going to start with Shaughnessy. And this is going to be coming at you. You see strands of hair begin to coil up and strike out trying to wrap you up, particularly your arm holding the shears. Okay. And she rolled a 20, dirty 20. Dirty 20? Of uh, course that hits. <laughs> so you are currently grappled. Uh, okay. As a bonus action this round, or next round, you can do it a, a posed strength check to try to escape on your turn. Am I, uh, are my hands free? Like, am I grappled, but my hands with the shear are free? <laughs> so um, what I will let you do on your turn. Um, okay. Because you are, she's, her hair is, animated hair has wrapped you up like a mm -hmm. cocoon. Oh, okay. Um, I will give you the chance to either make the opposed strength check uh, to try to break free mm -hmm. or make a dexterity check to see if you can cut part of the hair with your hand, um, just using sort of the, really trying to just barely start cutting free. Okay. I'll let All right. you try both of those. If you try the, the to cut, it'll be a disadvantage. If you try the strength, it'll be regular. Role. Okay. No problem. Um, unless okay. you have another action you want to No, 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 no. Do I take this action now or on we go turn. in order? Okay. Go in your order on your turn. So this is the other grapple check coming in. Z failed miserably. Didn't <laughs> darn close. So then she's just, she's 
horribly frustrated. She's almost like a vicious animal. She's like a wolverine that's been cornered. She just lunges at you because she missed with her hair. She's coming at you with claws. Okay. Um, but she didn't roll that great. Uh, 15 on the claw attack? No. Yeah, so her claws scrape against the outside of your carapace. No damage. So that's the end of that round. Next round, back at the top, we're with Nimoy again. What do you want to blow up this time? Come on, uh, Leonard. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna whip out a little diamond and spin it in my hand and toss it at her and do chromatic orb for thunder. Uh, nat twenty. E e e. So uh, I gotta look this stuff. Six. <laughs> Twelve. What, Jason? You didn't prepare for this, man. <laughs> chromatic <laughs> orb. <laughs> Yeah, 18. Uh, I know I'm going to do five necrotic damage to her. Uh, Chromatic Orb does 3d8 of type. There's no saving throw. If a 27 hits her, I hit her. Do we double damage on your world on spell attacks for critical? Uh, um, I am fine with I I think you if you get nat 20, I think you should always get a benefit. I don't care what it is. That's how I roll, too. Okay, so it was 18, uh, 19, 20, 21, 29, uh, 36 points of thunder damage right in her face. Holy crap. That's a lot of thunder damage. And it just affects her. It's not an area effect, right? Not an area effect. It only affects her. If it was an area effect, I would have sculpted it around my friends. Although everything in the tower knows we're here now. <laughs> they should have last time I set off shatter. Yeah. And that's a first level spell. All right. She's still alive. Boom. In still, your face. Still standing. Yeah, okay. All right. I got more. All right. So 17, Shaughnessy. What are you um, doing? Okay, I'm going to do my uh, dex check uh, okay. to try to uh, continue to cut to get my way out. Uh, All right. Go ahead. Dex check. Uh, disadvantage, but you can get your proficiency bonus dex, dex uh, almost like an attack roll. Okay. And all right. Uh, disadvantage. Disadvantage, uh, yeah. With my dex as a two, but I'm going to use a luck point because I'm lucky. Nice. And we re roll. <laughs> uh, okay. 17 plus five so uh, yeah without without a, any trouble you managed to cut the hair it's you great cut the hair, cut the hair and you're free um another section of hair just like before all the hair around you once you cut it free it crumbles becomes brittle falls apart and dies off recoils back at her the tower shakes again and i I got a feeling that I got a feeling uh, that this tower may crumble if I finish cutting her. And uh, yeah, it's just someone like, has feather fall prepared. <laughs> I will right. cease to exist. <laughs> <laughs> Z, what do you have for us? Uh, Z's going to attack again. Uh, that's a eighteen to hit. That hits. Okay, Z is going to uh, pop a Divine Smite into this one. So, yes, yes. Uh, so that is, that is six, um, 11 points of bludgeoning damage and 11 points of radiant damage. Woo! I'm going to do it again. So right. 22 all together. As you hit her, and then the radiant damage bursts from your weapon, you hear her scream, and you see her almost fold in on herself, and you see her hair uh, almost begin to spin around her until she is left suspended almost like in a cocoon in the room. Now, the fire is still raging at that end of the room, but the hair remains impervious, and she's in a cocoon. Um, you don't know whether she's dormant, dead, Alive, you're not sure because she's completely encased. Mm. Um, but the fire is moving. So you just picture that like a cocoon that's stuck. Spiderweb hair going out into the tower around you. Um, Bola Fruta, you're poking your head up out of the ladder and you see these actions occurring. 
You're muted, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shit. Those are some good charades. <laughs> I'm jumping out, running, and whoosh, right into the cocoon. Okay, roll the dice. Attack. That's what I do. We don't think. We just beat. So, Jason, do you do the Pretty if funny. we roll a natural one, we hit our friends? Yes. I do. That's why I'm making the roll. <laughs> 30 20. All right. You, you hit the cocoon square right in the middle of the cocoon. And as your axe bed sinks into it, you, it's almost like the hair just absorbs the blow and folds around it uh, without taking any damage. I wondered how much. So as you guys are standing there, again, that's the end of this round. The hag takes no action. There's no movement of any kind that suggests she's alive or moving within the cocoon. Uh, Next round. Okay. All right. Well, I happen to have another diamond handy. I'm going to hit her with chromatic orb again. Um no i think i'm just gonna stick with thunder i like the noise it makes now is that gonna deafen all of us <laughs> no it doesn't have that effect uh does a 21 hit i have a feeling it's uh, just be, uh... totally totally immobile yeah um you have no way of knowing whether or not the damages, but you see the the web itself, the cocoon could cost. Okay, so and then spring back. Uh, six and eight, you have to cut it with that. and five. fives, uh, nineteen points of thunder and six points of necrotic. You're gonna have to do damage. You're gonna have to cut okay. it open with the shears. Is the only way I think you're gonna get into it. Yeah. No, no apparent effect. Um, you saw it concuss from the blast wave, and then it. Rebounded back to its normal shape. Like so it, you can with it my could axe. Have, could have completely, you know, juiced her inside, but you can't tell because of the cocoon. Someone get the shears. I have the shears. <laughs> okay. What are you waiting for, Shaughnessy? My turn. <laughs> Good one, Rossi. No one's Shaughnessy. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, Shaughnessy will produce the shears, and it's just like, okay, guys, oh! we'll finish this and start cutting the cocoon. Yeah, no ro no roll necessary other than make sure you don't fumble. Okay. Um, but you can begin cutting. What are you cutting? Are you cutting the, the cocoon, or are you cutting the cocoon free from the hair? What, mm. what are you doing? I ask the guys, <coughs> do we want the cocoon free, or do we want to get to her Well, first? you know, a lot of times when you're cutting a deer, you just... What's hanging up, you know? The okay. most efficient path would really? be straight go to the creature. Straight to the creature. Okay. China Shaughnessy starts cutting into the cocoon. Okay. Um, the shears make quick work, relatively speaking, of the cocoon. And if you've ever cut open a cocoon, it splits apart. Inside is kind of gooey mess. You're not sure what's going on inside. And out plops. <laughs> Um, this massive creature, skeletal system, almost skinless, almost like it's in some sort of weird ectoplasm, drops on the ground, isn't moving um, that you can see, but it certainly doesn't look like it's completely dead either. Like maybe the cocoon was a regenerative process, but you've clearly short changed that. So okay, it's on the it's on the ground now. It's on the ground. Let's. <laughs> Yeah, I think Z will uh, put hammer to it. <laughs> uh, I'm joining in with an axe. It's just going to look like some kind of nasty uh, beatdown. <laughs> All right. Uh, you just, do, not, you do not have to. Just up on the screen for Murder Hobo, we'll just put a saying, you know, a scene of unimaginable, disgusting violence. <laughs> <laughs> let, it go, let it go at that. It's like that scene in like Office that. Space when they're beating the, <laughs> the, the fax machine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just, it's a gory mess. Uh, pretty soon it's it part of the hack. Should have printed my TPS report. <laughs> um, there is a fire, however, and so everybody roll a dex save for me just to make sure that no one is standing into the fire. 16. Don't stand in the fire. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a good chance I'll probably step in the fire. <laughs> 16 as well. 16 is fine. Hey, okay. 16 myself. 
15 for Shaughnessy. 15 is fine. As long as it, if anything less than 15, I'd be really tempted to have you fall. Is it still raining? Uh, is it still raining yeah. outside? There's still a storm okay. outside. Um, I will say at this point, we'll, we'll draw it to a close, obviously. So w- what you would have uh, or have discovered so far, the tower, um, at the top of the tower was a hag whose hair had infused the entire tower. Now, because you cut the hag free of the cocoon and killed her, her hair still suffuses the tower and has not seemed to become brittle and fade away like it did when you were cutting hair from her head. In fact, yeah, if we would have cut that last one. You do not see that the cocoon is actually connected to her after you splintered her out of the cocoon. She's just laying on the ground like a butterfly that had emerged too early. She is now dead. Poor orchid is laying there. Um, in a, Balls. Uh, many, many flattened pieces, but she's laying there completely <laughs> expired. The hair still suffuses the building. You can still see it. Uh, you don't notice it deteriorating at the moment. Somewhere below, you hear the faint sound of screaming. Matter of fact, it seems like it's getting closer, but it's not necessarily coming from the ladder. Um, so you're not sure what that means. Uh, Mauve and the valet still are in the tower somewhere. Um, the skeletons that you temporarily trapped below are still active, potentially. You're not sure at this point. <laughs> And there's an ogre zombie that you're not sure of. And the shadows. Meanwhile, oh. Bola Fruta still is doing this all the time because something is bothering him. You know, they say animals can sense things like ghosts. Mm-hmm. There you go. And so with that, we'll leave that as where the story ends for this night. Maybe sometime hey. we can pick up and finish the story. I think we should. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what are your final final thoughts or comments uh, before we go away? We'll start with Bola Fruta. Last uh, two. I tried to play this as far back as I could since I have actually ran this one with the. Oh, okay. So I mean, it, I I got the worst damn memory ever. So it's not like <laughs> I but it was still new in some way. I don't remember the hack at all. So you've been partying. Like you've been partying with Rob, hmm. haven't you? <laughs> So, you know, that's why I, I just kind of held back. and. Uh, Bro, I still remember the glass crocodile. What are you talking about? <laughs> Those nasty things. So, but no, I liked it. I liked it before. I still like it now. Uh, I still want to kill that stupid ballet, though. Man, I should have done it. I just didn't. <laughs> and I, I, have, I, I will be remiss at, after we're done. I will mention a couple things because we haven't, we haven't talked about all the what may you have found in the room. But okay, you know, Z. Any, any thoughts? Uh, by the way, Z, sticking with you, the personality, that was fab. That was oh yeah, oh, I, the whole thing. <laughs> I just I, I wanted to play Z exactly like that, just uh, constantly questioning if it doesn't if it made no logical sense for him to do things. He's not very like unless he straight up loses an enthrall motion, you know, or a, <clears throat> he he'd go with that. But I mean, it was just I I love playing Z. This was a blast to go through i'd love to finish out through the tower and oh, see how yeah. things go um but yeah he's uh this was just, this was a blast it was a lot of fun i like the i like the hags i kind of i'm starting to get a feel for where some of the things might be going in my head um but uh uh i love the uh the rapunzel feel for that uh creature Something yeah tangled. it wasn't quite tangled yeah, tangled, yeah. yeah. Bangled, yeah. Rapunzel, yeah. That was definitely the inspiration for the the hag. Um, and that's I the as we were setting it up for the story that what I, I knew in my head as you started playing that Z character at that very sort of questioning, query, query, query. I'm going, you've got a creature that's nothing but rage at the top of this tower. And her whole thing is to trick people and charm them into doing her will. Like yeah. this is this won't work well. Plus <laughs> was, uh, yeah, plus he was oh, also uh, great. It was great. Yeah, he's Oath of the Watcher too. So his his thing is like other planar, extraworldly creatures yeah. oh, aren't yeah. supposed to be here, and he's not supposed to make deals with them. The only one he points out is obviously he's dealing with his Nemo, and that's only because he doesn't see. He knows Nemo isn't technically an extra, isn't a Fey. He's just Fey touched by. He has a, he's meant for this world, but that creature is not meant for this world, which doesn't doesn't work for his oath. When I saw that's your, your character sheet come through, I was like. Oh, this 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 will be 
this will be an interesting. <laughs> oh yeah. So, all right, Nimoy. Oh, awesome. We need to finish this out. I got to know. Yeah. I mean, I need to set up a new lab in this tower. It's great. <laughs> oh, screw our lives wait. in our hometown we want the tower <laughs> you, you think this is the lab yeah oh, I, just, I just think that this is a nice place for a lab it's a nice tower if it doesn't burn down or explode the rest of the way I might have to destroy it before we're done who knows alright Shaughnessy uh, I, I loved it I think this is great I think we definitely need to pick this up again I mean hopefully Frank will let this uh, let us run with this one shot for a while so you know or every other one shot weekend or something so yeah I definitely want to do this <laughs> Frank's like nope <laughs> screw you guys <laughs> uh, most boring well, shit ever I'm never getting that on again uh, well, number one, thank you very much. This is my first time DMing for Murder Hobo. So thank you very much for taking it easy on me. I appreciate it. You guys are a great group of role players. It was a pleasure. Having seen you on some of the other shows, it was a pleasure DMing for you tonight. So thank you for that. Uh, and I guess, Frank, anything else from the GM or otherwise, uh, David, to wrap it up, I I'll, assume, we'll let you I'll call it. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll wrap it up. Uh, yes. Uh, this is the end of our show. Uh, I think you can check us out almost immediately on Twitch. Uh, if not, it'll show up uh, either tomorrow or the following day in our archive uh, on YouTube. But anyway, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube pages. Uh, we also have a Discord there for, for you if you're interested. Check out our swag shop at tinyurl.com. Uh, Buy a skateboard. RPG swag. I'm getting that goddamn skateboard. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, buy our stuff. It's great. It's great. Buy our crap. Uh, the thing, the new thing that that I mentioned that was in there. Uh, not only shirts, but these are <laughs> cast member shirts. Uh, we the Murder Hobo Con t-shirts are in the swag shop. So yes, if you're gonna if oh, you're gonna no! do the con, you gotta get the you gotta get the shirt, man. If you're gonna see the show, so yeah, check us out, Murder Hobo Con. We'd also like to thank. Uh, you can all get the details of that at murderhobocon.com. Uh, also, we'd like to thank Pirate Dog Dice. We'd like to thank Oddfish Games, Games. Uh, for Adventure Sense, and uh, yeah, I think that's it, folks. Coming so, soon, role playing with your cat. Yes, yes. Also, they do have a, a new system coming out, uh, how to RPG with your cat. So uh, from what I heard, Frank's played it. He liked it. He thought it was hilarious. So anyway, folks, that's us for tonight. That's Murder Hopo. Uh, like I said, you know, check us out on Twitter. I mean, uh, follow us on Twitter and uh, check us out on Twitch later or YouTube tomorrow or the following day. Anyway, that's At it. Con Hobo. Oh, well, yeah. There we go, at Con Hobo <laughs> on Twitter. All right, guys. Let's give them a, a dating game kiss as our tradition. And good night, everybody. <laughs>